Scotland's a wild and lovely place. But there's a change we must embrace. Scotland's water's world class. No doubt. So, take a refillable bottle. When you go out. It's your water, your life. Top up from the tap with Scottish water. Fresh, cool, clear. And only available right here. The latest in tech suit innovation. Frictionless fiber construction. Surface lift technology. Indo compression cage. Seamless exo shell. Here, Vinzo. Battleborn. Well, good evening and... <laughs> Want me to try? Good evening, welcome to Aberdeen Sports Village for the Scottish National Open Swimming Championships 2019. Keep talking. Keep talking. I will do it, of course. Uh, welcome to everyone who's joined us there this evening um, at a balmy Aberdeen, 70 degrees plus. It was outside the Aberdeen Sports Fillies today and uh, considerably warmer than that inside for swimmers, coaches, officials and spectators. This is, of course, the National Championships of Scottish Swimming. We are delighted to welcome everyone who's joining us and uh, the 650 swimmers from 72 clubs are uh, very, very pleased that you're with us to watch some fast racing and uh, exciting swimming. Just making their final preparations for uh, racing this evening as the pool arena gets set up for what we hope will be an exciting and uh, fast opening to Scottish Swimming's 2019 National Open Championships. Yeah, looking forward to a good evening of action tonight. My name's Paul Noble, we're taking you through the action tonight and you heard the voice of Alan Wynn. There's the Scottish National Coach joining us for tonight's action. 
Thank you, Paul. Very pleased to be here and uh, guiding everybody through these exciting uh, finals this evening. We start off with the women's 100 metres butterfly. Yeah, we have uh, the format for tonight. The women's 100 metres butterfly starts us off and it uh, kind of sets the scene for the rest of the night. We have a multi-classification final to start us off with. For those para swimmers taking part in these championships, we have got the B final for the able-bodied swimmers and also the A final. Some big names taking part tonight, Alan. Should be a very exciting evening indeed. We were just talking before we came on air there about the uh, kind of history of this championship. It's been around for absolute decades and we're still attracting the big names to the Scottish National Open Championship. Uh, isn't a reference, of course, to my age, having <laughs> swum in these championships uh, just a few decades ago. But yes, uh, we have consistently and uh, very successfully attracted some of the best swimmers across the world at these championships. And we're delighted that 20 of the 72 clubs taking part uh, this weekend are from outside Scotland. Yeah, very big representation here and some of uh, Scotland and uh, Britain's very best swimmers as well will see taking part in these championships. But well, we do start off with the 100 metres butterfly. And you can join us, of course, in the conversation. Hashtag SNOC19. So send your tweets in to myself and Alan. We'll give you a shout out. We do start off with 100 butterfly. As we said, we had a record-breaking performance from one of the para swimmers in this morning's heats and that was Tony Shaw who uh, swims right up here in Aberdeen set a new British record so we're looking for Tony Shaw to do something and could it be a record for Tane Bruce as well Scottish record holder very good swim in the heats this morning very comfortable yeah she uh, was very controlled down the first 50 and look for her to take it out considerably stronger this evening and challenge her own national record of 58.92 seconds well, watch out for that one we move on to the men's under freestyle after that 100 butterfly again, Scottish para record might be under threat for Oliver Carter. And it's a real uh, high class field in the final of the, the A final for the men. It certainly is. We have uh, several of our medal winning Commonwealth Games really team swimmers taking part in that uh, men's 100 freestyle final. And uh, this will be the final tune up for them and many of our international swimmers as they head to the international championships all over the world this summer, World Championships of course in Korea, World University Games, World Junior Championships and uh, for the more uh, local juniors, European Junior Championships which will be here in Aberdeen next year and the European Youth Olympic Festival. So that rounds off a very, very exciting summer of swimming which these swimmers are preparing themselves for. Yeah, great facility here in Aberdeen. The first of four days of course of this Scottish National Open Championship. Next event up, a couple of 200s for us to enjoy as well. A 200 freestyle for women. Again, very high class field as well. Edinburgh University, very well represented in that one. Catherine Greenslade was the fastest qualifier from the heat. But Hannah Miley coming back from injury. The first time we'll see her tonight in the 200 freestyle. And she'll be back in again a little bit later on in her uh, favoured individual medley. And the 200 metres butterfly, well, you can't really see much past Tom Bailey. He had a, a great heat swim. Looked really comfortable and uh, is well ahead of the rest of the field. Yeah, Tom has really settled nicely into his new life in Plymouth. Of course, the local lad himself, having some here at Aberdeen through his uh, secondary school years and now uh, pursuing an interest in maritime studies down at University of Plymouth and uh, swimming very, very well, regularly under the two minutes for two and a fly. And uh, he certainly had a commanding uh, heat swim this morning and we'll be looking to build on that later on. Yeah, he certainly looked very comfortable this morning. The move over to the, the 50 metre events going down in the distance. 50 metres backstroke should be an absolute cracker. The three Scots in the centre lanes. Lucy Hope, Kathleen Dawson and Cassie Wilde, old rivals. Indeed they are, all finalists last year at uh, the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games and looking to uh, score points over each other as they swim this uh, 50 backstroke and uh, themselves uh, set up for exciting international summer of racing. And uh, we saw a very quick time in qualification, uh, Zach Aitchison. 28.18 in the 50 breaststroke. That was a cracking heat swim as well. Thomas Fardell, not too far behind him, around about half a second as well. And 
Yeah, we mentioned earlier that uh, we did see Hannah Miley in our favoured event. That's coming up late in the session. Hannah Miley, fastest qualifier for the 400 individual medley. Great to, to see Hannah back in the water after her uh, injury problems at the tail end of last year. But she went well and she dominated that heat this morning. She did. Uh, she was also very controlled and is looking stronger and stronger with every swim this season. Her uh, 2019 season will culminate in a participation at the US National Swimming Championships at Stanford University in California where we'll be sending a small Scottish team to finalise their preparations as they head into the Olympic season. Finish the evening off, 1500 freestyle for men. It's the fastest heat. We didn't see these swimmers this morning, so we'll look forward to seeing them for the first time. Jake Bonsall from Cambridge University, fastest entry time in that, just ahead of West Lothian swimmer Daniel Ferguson. And finish the night off with the relays, 4 by 200 metres freestyle relay promises to be a great culmination to the evening's action. And Aberdeen performance, maybe the favourite of that one. Could we have a home win? In the could, very first night. We could indeed finish this session with a home win and we could start the session with a home win and perhaps a new British record for Tony Shaw. Well, we are into the 100 metres butterfly multi-classification. We have two para swimmers in this one. Tony Shaw. Closest to us of the two. And Natalia Hochai, Tony Shaw from Aberdeen Performance, Natalia Hochai from the Aberdeen Club. Natalia is a swimmer with a visual impairment. Tony Shaw is missing the lower part of her right arm. Well, the Scottish record, British record that Tony Shaw set this morning was 108.04. So we'll look for her to improve on that. Can she get close to the European record? as well, which stands at 107.61. And Natalia Hochai also set a new Scottish record this morning, so watch out for the swimmer in lane number five as well, the visually impaired swimmer. But Tony Shaw has had a great year, last year or so, on. She has. Commonwealth Games was uh, her first appearance on the international stage, followed up last summer by a terrific European Championship gold medal in Dublin on the 400 freestyle. This is perhaps her favoured event, and as you'll see, she's swimming with great rhythm, great balance to her stroke, and as she approaches the final five metres, she's going to be very close to that record she set this morning. Well, 108.04 was the record this morning for Tony Shaw, and, oh, well, the clock not playing ball with us now. We're not going to get that time until it's made official here. Natalia Hochai coming into the closing stages now, and she is trying to aim for the time that she set this morning in 123.91. Well, we'll wait for those times to be made official. But Tony Shaw wasn't far away from that time that uh, she set this morning. I don't think so. It was a very, very good swim, very positive, really courageous out the first 50, and managed to hold the stroke together well. Um, down the second 50, and uh, we shall await the decision of the timing system, which we hope will be another record for Tony Shaw. Now, Tony Shaw will be on our way to the Paris Swimming World Championships to be held in London in September. So we'll look for her to perform well in London. I wonder if she's going to go there with uh, a record under her belt there. Again, we said that European gold medal in the 400 freestyle. She's very close to the European record for this one, 107.61, held by the great Spanish competitor, Sarai Gascon. Bow to your superior knowledge of para swimming, uh, Paul. <laughs> it's a really competitive classification that uh, Tony swims in S9 with... Uh, Existing swimmers and the reclassified swimmers making it extremely tough to win medals on that world stage. Yeah, Sophie Pascoe from New Zealand has been setting records all over the place. She's been travelling about competing over the last couple of months. And she's going to certainly be the one to beat. She set a new world record in this 100 metres butterfly. So... Tony Shaw's got her work out, but she's young and she's improving all the time, isn't she? She is, and we're not even sure what her best event's going to be. She really is uh, very um, raw as far as international swimming is concerned. Here we go with the B final. Now we're going to have to come back to that multi-classification result, unfortunately. The B final for this 100 metres butterfly. Right down at the bottom 
of the screen. Alice Meldrum from South Lanarkshire in lane zero. Lucy Ross, her South Lanarkshire teammate, goes in one. Scarlett Ferris in two. Dundee City Aquatic. Sophie Smith from St Thomas in three. Tara Hayworth from Edinburgh University in four. Jessica Christie from South Aberdeenshire in five. Katie Taylor, City of Glasgow in six. Madeline Robertson from Mijas in Spain in seven. Serena Guaram from City of Glasgow in eight. And Natalie Jones from Warren de Bass in that outside lane in lane number nine. Buenas tardes to uh, our Spanish <laughs> viewers and listeners uh, supporting Mary there out in uh, lane number seven. She's uh, made a really strong start and this her favoured stroke, perhaps better on the 200 than we we'll maybe see the conditioning impact of that on the second 50. Well, coming down to closing stages of this one, it's very, very tight in the centre and also going well right in the outside lane here, Alice Meldrum in lane zero, could she nick this one? In fact, lane number one is actually Lucy Ross might just take this one and it is, well, very close. Well, it could be Madeline Robertson, maybe 104.40 for Madeline Robertson. She takes that one for Spain. She does, uh, for Scotland and Spain. Scotland she and Spain. is a member of our youth development squad <laughs> and, uh, as I said, just there, uh, travelled over to uh, Aberdeen last weekend for a joint camp. Well, we're just uh, listening to the announcement there for... Tony Shaw, it looks like she has improved that record that she set this morning by one one hundredth of a second. That's the way to do it, Alan, isn't it? Yeah. Two records in a day for Tony Shaw. And I think we just heard there Natalia Holchai as well improving the record that she set this morning. So a great way to start for the para swimmers. It is. That's uh, known as the Sergei Bupka method. <laughs> for those of you who know your pole vault, he was breaking the world record uh, one centimetre at a time with all of the attendant rewards that came with that uh, fantastic athlete that he was. And Tony Shaw is uh, doing the same thing, the swimming equivalent, one one hundredth of a second at a time. A terrific day to start off our campaign here in our home pool at the Aberdeen Sports Village. Well, we move on to the A final. And the lineup for that A final, Isabel Jones goes in lane zero. From University of Stirling, Emily Horn in two from City of Glasgow, Yasmin Perry and Guy Alcaraz, the two Aberdeen performance swimmers in at two and three. Tim Bruce, the Scottish record holder, Edinburgh University favourite for this one. In lane number four, Katie Robertson and Lucy Greaves, South Ayrshire in five and six. Kiana McInnes, once Commonwealth Games swimmer last year, goes in seven. Yvonne Brown, South Lanarkshire in eight, and Katie Goodburn, one of two juniors in this one, alongside Lucy Grieve. She goes in the outside lane, right up at the top of the screen in lane number nine. Tim Bruce looked good this morning, Alan. She certainly did. She looked very comfortable, very controlled, and expect her to attack this race right from the start. So Tim Bruce right in the centre, the lower of those two yellow lanes in the centre of the pool. Got a flat start here, Guy Alcaraz gone out very fast in the early stages. Tim Bruce right there in contention and probably just forging ahead as they come up to the turn on. She is, uh, of note here is that Katie Robertson in lane number five, much better known as a breaststroker, but not too shabby on butterfly. Tane Bruce out, 28.16. Now, if she's able to come back strongly, as she often is, she really could threaten that Scottish record. Well, Tim Bruce now coming up to 25 metres to go now. Scottish record we are looking out for. It's that time of 58.92. She has got the advantage over Katie Robertson who's going really well, Kiana McInnes also going well up there in lane 7 is it going to be inside that 58.92, it's 59.67 just a few tenths outside Alan but Tim Bruce will take that one 59.67 ahead of Katie Robertson and Kiana McInnes in the bronze medal position yeah that was good uh, swimming from Tane she's not at her sharpest because she's focusing on her end of season meet in about a month's time at those US National Championships in California and that's a pretty good tune-up from her this evening. 
Well, Team Bruce, 59.67. Taking that one, Katie Robertson in second position. I think the Scottish Junior Champion will be Lucy Grieve of South Ayrshire. So two medals for South Ayrshire. Very good indeed. Uh, Lucy Grieve was another part of that youth development squad who were here last weekend working on the racing skills. Nice to see her coming through and getting on the podium at uh, these senior championships. Well, Scottish record holder, Team Bruce. That will be our Scottish champion. Presentations will be coming up just in a short while. So we move on to the next event now for event 102, the men's 100 freestyle. And again, we have a multi-classification final to start us off with. Cameron Hempel from Carnegie going in lane zero. He's an S10 swimmer. Kyle Hughes, an S9 swimmer from North Lanarkshire next to the S14 swimmer, Logan Smith. Uh, lane 3, Dylan Blakely from East Lothian. Also in the S14 class. Holly Carter, Scottish record holder from University of Stirling in the S10 class. And Jack Milne, Dundee City Aquatic, goes in lane number 5, S14. John Law, visually impaired swimmer, University of Stirling, goes in 6. Matthew Scott, another S14 swimmer, Aberdeen Performance, goes in 7. And the lineup completed by Adam Donachie, South Lanarkshire, and Sam Downey from East Lothian. Probably the one to watch will be Ollie Carter. And John Law doesn't look like he's taking the start in lane number six. Jack Milne off very fast. Ollie Carter, the two highest. Ranked swimmers there are right away in the middle of the pool here. It is, of course, the swimmers who get closest to the world record for their particular classification will be awarded the medals. Holly Carter and Jack Milne going out together, absolutely together at that turn there. Only a tenth of a second separating them. And Jack Milne's target, his world record, is slightly slower than Holly Carter. So you'd be the favourite at this stage, but both going well. Going really well, and uh, for those... Not so used to watching uh, swimming, who's joining us, look at the strength of the leg kick from both boys out in front here. Six beat kick, strong and powerful, driving them home towards the wall. Oli Carter will get the touch. And is it going to be inside his Scottish record? It is inside his Scottish record, 57.38 for Oli Carter. He's improved his own record by about a quarter of a second, 0.25 of a second inside that old record mark, so well done. Ollie Carter, he'll be absolutely delighted with that one. Making improvements and pushing his way through the ranks. Ollie Carter, one to watch for the future, you would say. He's uh, done really well moving from uh, Carnegie Swim Club to the University of Stirling. Settled in well, coached by Josh Williamson at the successful Stirling uh, University programme. And he'll be delighted with that. It's a really, really encouraging swim for him. So Ollie Carter at the top of the tree there. 57.38, Jack Milne in second place and Dylan Bleakley in third place swimming that 103 for Dylan Bleakley. Does these para swimmers exit the water, move into the B final? B final. Joe Watt goes in lane zero from City of Glasgow. Fraser Meadows, Edinburgh University in one. Grant Henderson in two from City of Glasgow. Sam Horrock, City of Manchester Aquatic in three. Michael Hewitt from Swim Ulster in four. Ross Leslie, Edinburgh University in five. Jordan Cooley, Stockport Metro in six. Chris Muir, Glasgow University in seven. Reagan Lloyd, Team Ipswich in eight. And Ode Hasuna from Edinburgh University in lane number nine. All these swimmers in the 52 to 53 second range Alan should be quite a close contest this one this will be a throw a blanket over the field I think uh, Paul very uh, tight heats this morning as always with the men's 100 metres freestyle just over a second separating all 10 boys um, it looks like Ross Leslie first out to the wall there 24.95 just ahead of Michael Hewitt in lane number four. It is four and five, but Ross Leslie in the top of that those two yellow lane markers 
Looks like he is going to take this one. It's going to be an excellent swim here from Ross Leslie. He's going to get in ahead of the field, 51. Point four zero. That's a good improvement from the swim he did this morning. That's a very good improvement for him. That's a best time for Ross Leslie. Coached at the University of Edinburgh by Matt Trodden. And he has steadily improved this year. Um, everything about him, his training performance, his skills, his application to the correct performance behaviours. And that's a just reward for that. 51.4 is... Uh, Beginning to get down there, if he can uh, knock a few tenths off that, get into the 50 points, then he'll be reasonably well ranked among Scottish 100 metres freestylers. Yeah, cracking time there. Went out fast, 24.95, under the 25 second mark. Gave himself a good chance coming back. He certainly did, and for comparison to world level, the fastest time in the world this year currently stands to Kyle Chalmers of Australia, the Olympic champion from Rio, and uh, 47.35 is his world leading time, followed very closely by our own Duncan Scott 47.87, just rounding off the top five, a very very competitive race coming up in Korea for those world championships Well Duncan Scott not taking part in this under freestyle tonight but we do have a number of the swimmers who followed them home at the British Championships earlier this year, real star studded field here Jack Sharanik in zero Martin Walton in one, Kieran McGuckin in two, Craig McLean in three, David Cumberledge who looked good in the heats this morning, he goes in four, Jack Thorpe goes in five, Scott McLean in six, Scott Godby in seven, Stephen Milne in eight and Callum Bain completes the lineup in lane number nine. Talked about the representation in the British international team, Scott McLean going in six. First uh, British cap going to those World Championships next month. Terrific performance to make the men's relay squad. Scott McLean, those bright jammers there in lane number six, just up above the two yellow lanes of David Cumberledge and Jack Thorpe. David Cumberledge. Well, he uh, came to the fore as a sprinter, so expect him to be out fast. And Jack Thorpe, well, he's no slouch either. And this is very, very close. And Callum Bain going really well in the outside lane in nine. Just the middle lanes, I think, uh, touching out on the 50. Cumberland's looks very, very strong. He's had a good, strong season. He'll be going to the World University Games, competing for Great Britain in Italy. He's being pressurised down this last 15 metres, but looks like he's going to hold on pretty comfortably. Pushed all the way by teammate Jack Thorpe outside him. And here comes Cumberledge into the closing stages there, 49.42. And he will take that one ahead of Jack Thorpe. Two swimmers in the 49 range. Craig McLean getting it ahead of Scott McLean for third position. But well done, David Cumberledge. 49.42, just holding on at the end there. Jack Thorpe had a good finish. Very strong finish for Jack. He'll be pleased again with that. Uh, Keen-eyed observers will have spotted a natty-looking beard on Jack Thorpe, which will be removed for his peak performance of the season. We hope we'll be at those US Nationals I mentioned earlier, and uh, he'll be very much a strong feature of the Scottish team who take part in that competition. Yeah, real strength in depth in the, the 100 freestyle We're dominated by the Edinburgh University and the University of Stirling teams you have to say Alan, a real great representation in that final there when we have uh, men's relays it's always a tight tussle between University of Edinburgh and University of Stirling be it freestyle or medley, short course or long course, they're always the top two, interchangeable in terms of the places but very very competitive well, no men's relays tonight, it's the women's relays later on, but those men's relays be coming later on in the championship programme. This is the first day of four days of action, of course, from Aberdeen. We're moving on to the next event, which is the women's 200 freestyle. We only have one swimmer in this multi-classification event, and that's Amy McFarlane from North Lanarkshire. Swimmer in the S14 classification. Swimmer with a learning disability. 
para swimming classifications in S1 to S10, those for physical impairment, with S1 being the most impaired and S10 being the least impaired. 11 to 13 for those with a visual impairment, and the S14, which Amy McFarlane goes with a learning disability. And Amy McFarlane, one of the uh, most experienced members in the, the Scottish team, the Scottish para team. She's been a fixture in that team for probably around about a decade now, Amy McFarlane. And of course, integration of para and able-bodied events, um, very much a strong feature of Scottish Swimming's competitive and development programmes, and one that's now being replicated across the world, I think, Paul. Yeah, a number of countries taking the lead from here in the UK, integrating a, a number of uh, the para swimmers into the mainstream meets. I think we started, I mean, I remember swimming in the, these Scottish Nationals as a, a para swimmer, and that was back almost, well, 20 years ago now, uh, when the events were first being introduced into the programme here in the Scottish National Open. It's great to see other countries doing the very same thing that Scottish Swimming began many, many years ago. Amy McFarlane, she's on her own, hopefully get a good reception here from the crowd. She's halfway through. Amy McFarlane, her heat time is 2.48.35. She'll be looking to improve on that. To get a medal here, because she's the only swimmer, she has to challenge the Scottish record. And that's going to be a tough ask for Amy McFarlane, the record. Still held by the, the great Tracy Wiscombe, who was Paralympic champion back in 1996. So that record has uh, stood for a number of years. Shows you how good that Scottish record was. So Amy McFarlane pretty much just swimming for this personal time here. She would love, absolutely love to get under the time she set this morning. I'm sure she would. And she's pacing for just about that. If she can come back strongly on this last 50 with some encouragement from the crowd down on uh, poolside and here in the balcony and the, the noise does begin to build for her approaching the last 25 uh, it's always a tough ask to swim on your own but Amy McFarlane is definitely rising to the challenge very important member of the, the Scottish team she's featured in many relay squads over the years Amy McFarlane and still going strong is she going to get inside that 248.35 it's going to be mighty close. I think she might just sneak under there. Yeah, 2.47 for Amy McFarlane. Well done, Amy. She'll be delighted with that one. North Lanarkshire swim team swimmer. Amy McFarlane improving that entry time or a swim from this morning. So well done, Amy. She'll have enjoyed that, I think, getting the acclaim of the crowd here in Aberdeen. It was a nice reception there for Amy. It certainly was. And uh, I think that's something characteristic of swimming. Here in Scotland, in the UK, across the world, uh, people appreciate the effort and the application and commitment that these swimmers make on a daily and weekly basis and really do appreciate that when they see them race, uh, either as a full list of 10 or, as in the case of Amy, swimming on her own. Now we're back to the full 10 now for this B final of this women's 200 metres freestyle. Again, could be a very close contest to line up for this one. In lane zero, Hannah O'Shea from Munster. What a support for the swimmers in this B final. In fact, Meg Finnan is in lane number zero. Rebecca Reid in one from Aberdeen. Ellie Hamilton from first goes in lane number two. Tara Hayworth from Edinburgh University in three. Charlotte Reardon from Leinster in four. Naya Thompson from Denmark in five. Lauren Turnbull from Stirling Swim in 6, Barry Swanson, Aberdeen Performance in 7, Hanno O'Shea from Munster in 8, and Elle Donegan from Swim Ulster goes in lane number 9. Probably into an early lead, it's one of the Danish swimmers, Maya Thompson in lane number 5. Just heading Charlotte O'Rear, the big Irish presence here in this 200 freestyle B final. There is and a great Irish presence throughout the whole meet. We're delighted to welcome our Irish cousins from across the sea and the very good uh, supporters of all of our Scottish swimming events throughout the year. But it's the Dane who takes the touch 102 point, uh, sorry, 101.05, which if she's able to hold on to that and bring it back, she'll be well inside her heat time this morning of 208. Going up to the final turn here. Still Maya Thompson. 
just about edging them. But Charlotte O'Rear then from Winston, the 17 year old, just one year older than the Dane. He's poised to make a challenge down this last 50 by the looks of things. It's very, very, very tight and kid. The Dane it just leads them Maya Thompson, but it is Tara Hayworth and Charlotte O'Rear then trying to come back. But it looks like Thompson going really well and holding on to this lead as they come into the last 25. She's done extremely well to hold the lead. The field were beginning to close but she's managed to maintain her stroke length, keep that strong six-beat kick going inside the final 10 metres. She's going to take it in a much, much improved time. Well, Thompson. It's very close at the end there. Naya Thompson pressed by Rebecca Reed, the home swimmer, right down there in lane number one from Aberdeen, who finished like an absolute train there. 206.93 for Rebecca Reed, but it is Naya Thompson, the long-time leader who held on to that one, 206.79, with Meg Finnan in third place in 208.16. It's lanes one and zero. They are just sneaking into second and third there, Alan. They are, they are, and uh, that's probably a little error in the heat swimming this morning where they could have been a little bit closer to those uh, middle lanes. Big, big improvements from many of the girls there, and of course they will be pleased with that. And uh, perhaps looking back on those heat swims and saying, maybe I could have been in an inside lane. Maybe I could have even made this next race the full final. Well, this is the A-final coming up. Just a uh, short note there. Ellie Hamilton was the only junior in the A or the B-final. She'll take the Scottish junior title. But they line up for the A-final. Rebecca Thornton, Borough of Kirtley's in zero. Sophie Lewis-Ward. One of five Edinburgh University swimmers goes in one. Sophie Smith, St Thomas in two. Lucy Hope, Catherine Greenslade and Rachel Masson. The Edinburgh Uni teammates in three, four and five. Hannah Miley in the water in lane number six. Now representing Aberdeen Performance. Victoria Catterson, swim Ulster in lane number seven. Juliet Cassini from Edinburgh University in eight. And Alice Alcaraz, Aberdeen Performance in lane number nine right up there at the top Rachel Masson a good contest with Lucy Hope they were in the same heat this morning only 8 100 separating them and both behind Catherine Greenslade the fastest qualifier in 202.44 good to see Hannah Miley in the water we spoke about her in the introduction Hannah Miley back in again into the water after that uh, injury layoff at the tail end of last year. Yes, she's made a really strong recovery from that, as I mentioned earlier, building gradually through the season. Pacing, very, very important in this uh, 200 feet still event. Ideally, even pace is the way to swim it. All of these girls looking very controlled on that uh, first 50. 28 points, probably just about right. 28.5 uh, on the mark for breaking two minutes for the final time. Now coming down to the halfway point, maybe three swimmers in a row. And it's the three from Edinburgh University, Lucy Hope, Catherine Greenslade and Rachel Masson. The three fastest qualifiers have gone out into the top three positions now with uh, Greenslade just taking that slender lead over Lucy Hope. Only eight one hundredths of a second separating those two with Rachel Masson just behind them. Lucy Hope going a little bit faster than she went in the heats this morning. She certainly is. This is uh, one of her favoured events. Catherine Greenslade and Lucy won a gold medal last year at the Europeans in the uh, mixed 4x200 freestyle relay. So they are definitely the favourites for this event. And as they come to the 150 turn, still just under pace for breaking two minutes. If they can swim 30.0 or slightly more than that, they should just sneak under, which is a good marker at this stage. Well, Greenslade just holding off the challenge from Lucy Hope. Now it looks like it's down to these two in these closing stages. Rachel Masson in third position, but Lucy Hope trying to dig in. Not sure she's going to get past Greenslade, though. It's going to be Edinburgh Uni 1, 2 and 3, and it is going to be Catherine Greenslade. We'll take that one just under the two-minute mark. 159.87 for Greenslade with Lucy Hope giving everything there just over the two-minute mark. Two minutes point one three with Rachel Masson in third spot and Lucy Hope for that second place finishes the, the first Scott home, so she will be the Scottish champion.
she will and she'll be I think reasonably happy with that. Uh, Catherine Greenslade, the only one sneaking under two minutes to complete her preparations for the World University Games next month. But uh, Lucy, another one of the contingent travelling out to US National Championships at the end of July, beginning of August. Yeah, it was a nice swim from Lucy Hope and Catherine Greenslade just holding off the challenge from her teammate in the closing stages there. So it's a bit of a unique one, two, and at three there in that 200 freestyle. We've seen the men's 200 freestyle really push on, and the, the Great Britain team, Alan, very successful on the, the international stage. Are the, are the women about to, to make that leap into 200 freestyle relay territory? Well, we would like to think so, but it's such a competitive event internationally. Australia just had their World Championship trials and hold the uh, fastest two times in the world this year and uh, with their next two or three swimmers very, very close to that. They'll be the team to beat in the World Championships in Great Britain. We'll hope to qualify for next year's Olympic spot and then build towards a challenge in Tokyo. Well, it would be nice to see. Always, uh, we always love a relay. We always love the Great Britain team to be competitive in those relay events. The men, as I said, been very successful over the last few years and we are on to the men's event now it's the men's 200 meters butterfly it's the b final no multi classification event in this one so straight into the b final and we have elliot sinclair in line zero from dumfries matthew witten from rackley in lane number one gregor swinney in two city of glasgow thomas coates from west lothian in lane number three no swimmer in four, but we do have Fraser Allison from Warren de Bass in five, Cameron Finlayson from Edinburgh University in six, George Cowan, St Thomas in seven, Connor McNeil, City of Glasgow in eight, and Ryan Duncan from St Thomas in lane number nine. Nice start there in lane number one, Matthew Witten from Rackley. In fact, no, it's lane number two. My apologies, Gregor Swinney from City of Glasgow. Sorry, Gregor, doing you a disservice there leading them through at the halfway point. Yeah, that was uh, not the sharpest of turns. He may have uh, overcommitted himself, if I could put it that way. He's working hard down this third 50, but so important to stay relaxed, to stay uh, on pace on this 200 metres butterfly. If you use that energy too soon, then uh, we'll need to get the piano off your back <laughs> down the last 50. It, uh, it can be a real struggle. He's managing to hold off the rest of the field, but his uh, strokes beginning to shorten. Nothing like as long and smooth as it was over that uh, first 100 metres, and it really wouldn't be a big surprise if he gets overhauled down this last 50. Still leading, but only just. Well, we've seen it happen very often, and very often in the 200 metres butterfly. It's such a gruelling event. You really just have to get your pacing right, as Alan said. And Swinney, well, he is trying to hold on now, but he is being overhauled by Fraser Allison with that red cap of Warrender in the centre who's paced it a little bit better and also Conor McNeil going well City of Glasgow over there one lane down from the top in lane number 8 Swinney now trying to hold on desperately but it's going to be Fraser Allison who will take this one Fraser Allison in 213.98 Conor McNeil is in second 215.83 and George Cowan 216.83 Point one one in third position, but a well-paced race there, and it paid dividends in the end for Fraser Allison. It did. He's uh, just back this week from our training camp in Spain. Traditionally, the Warren de Bass Club go there for a couple of weeks to do some training and competing in Calea, Barcelona, and uh, Fraser showing, well, showing a tan, which obviously he, he didn't pick up in Edinburgh over the last couple of weeks, and showing some nice strong pacing over that uh, 200 metres butterfly. Little improvement from this morning. He and his coach Kostas Kalitsis will be pretty pleased with that. Fraser of course will be at the British Summer Championships in Glasgow in just uh, three or four weeks time which for most of the younger swimmers is the culmination of their season's work. Well you never know he might have picked up that tan today in Aberdeen. Glorious day here. He may, all, he may well have done yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, taps off is an expression we're familiar with in uh, the west of Scotland. I'm not sure what the Doric equivalent is, but uh, certainly it was warm enough to get a tan, that's for sure. We might have to find that out for later on in the week. The weather forecast is excellent here in the northeast of Scotland, as it is in the rest of the UK. 
So great uh, week to come up here for the Scottish National Open Championships. We have the A final now. Big names in this one. Mark Ford, the only junior. City of Glasgow in zero. Craig Greenock in one. City of Glasgow. Michael Q in two. Swim Ulster. Mark Elric, City of Glasgow in three. Tom Bailey, Plymouth Leander, the pre-race favourite. Thomas Payne, City of Manchester Aquatic, experienced campaigner from Manchester in five. Ryan Brown, City of Glasgow in six. Jamie McDonald, Warren de Bass in seven. Felix Gifford, eight, University of Stirling. Jonah Walsh from Edinburgh University in lane number nine. Tom Bailey looked excellent this morning in the heat, very, very comfortable. Eased up in the second half of that heat swim this morning. And uh, he's going to be tough to beat. He certainly is. He now swims in Plymouth, but of course he is a local lad. And he'll be looking to take the victory here in his former home pool. 27.13 is a really strong first 50 from Tom. Not looking as if he's forcing it uh, too hard. Another thing to look for is the... Strength and depth of the kick on uh, 200 metres butterfly and Tom managing to control that really well. I think he'll try and pick that up over the second 100 and uh, this is a really smooth and controlled first 100 metres butterfly. Yeah, Tom Bailey is going to bring them into the halfway point with around about half a body length lead over Mark, Mark Elric 58.50. Thomas Bain just half a second behind City of Glasgow's Mark Elric in third with Ryan Brown, the only other man under the one minute mark. But Tom Bailey, well, expect him to really dominate the second half of this race. He is away and clear now of the rest of the field with Thomas Payne, probably the most likely to pose a challenge in the second half of this one. Yeah, it's uh, still going really well for Tom Bailey, turning at the 150 mark, 128.4 just under the uh, 31 seconds for that 50 if he can maintain that pace he will go under two minutes which I think he's done just once already this season so a nice lead in for him to the uh, culmination of his season's efforts Billy still in the lead 15 metres to go just shortening his stroke slightly but maintaining that good rhythm I'll keep an eye on the time for Tom Bailey as he comes maybe just about the two minute mark he is under 159.66 he'll be delighted with that one Thomas Payne in second 202.36 had a good second half the man from City of Manchester Aquatic and Mark Elric in third position in 205.21 with Craig Greenock finishing well in 206.50 so City of Glasgow third and fourth City of Manchester Aquatic in second but no doubt about the winner Tom Bailey looking impressive he certainly was it's uh, tough enough to swim to on a butterfly but if you are uh, swimming it on your own as Tom Bailey did then uh, that does make it all the tougher uh, but very impressive for him he'll be pleased and look to move that time on at the British Championships in Glasgow yeah, he's continuing it's a good run of form, Tom Bailey, and we'll take that Scottish National Open title for Plymouth Leander. So 200 metres butterfly, well the next event that we have will move up to the other end of the pool, but we have medal presentations first I think for the events that we have seen earlier, 100 metre butterfly events and the 100 metres freestyle events as well. Uh, getting some feedback about my taps off oh, yeah. comments. <laughs> um, it's nice to bring some Scottish phrases, some Scottish culture to this live streaming event. Exactly. Well, we should have welcomed uh, earlier in the session the, the viewers on the, the BBC Sport Online. Uh, very welcome, very warm welcome to you all joining us here in Aberdeen. Great to see some coverage of swimming on the BBC website so hope you're tuning in hopefully you are enjoying the action on this first night of competition we've seen some very very fast swims so far and they're only going to get faster as we go through the championship program well here in his first medal presentation is a young lady who is definitely bang on form the local last Tony Shaw one of the multi-classification swimmers, one of the para-swimmers. 
missing the, the lower part of her arm. She swims in the S9 class. And that is two British records in a day for Tony Shaw, as we mentioned earlier. She set a new British record this morning in the heat. She betted it by one one hundredth of a second tonight in the final. Tony Shaw, watch out for her in the World Championships, the Paris Swimming World Championships in London in September. Yes, very much an up-and-coming young swimmer. Still just uh, 16 years of age and a terrific start to her weekend swimming. A couple of PBs, a couple of Scottish records and uh, two gold medals as we look at the presentation for the able-bodied. 100 metres butterfly for women. Kiana McInnes of Stirling University, world junior bronze medalist from Indianapolis a couple of years ago in third. Katie Robertson, as we mentioned, more recognised for being a breast choker, but a very nice 60 point for 100 fly there in second place. Tane Bruce taking the win, University of Edinburgh Summer, also Scottish record holder, she's under 60 seconds, and the junior champion Lucy Gree from South Ayrshire, a couple of them on the podium. Yeah, good swims from the South Ayrshire Summers here, Katie Robertson did... Uh an excellent job, you said I'm surprised to see her go so fast in the butterfly, I was used to see her swim in the breaststroke but yeah, not a bad uh, butterfly at all Katie Robertson Yeah, she's uh, pretty good all round, we know her better as being a breaststroker and she was at those World Junior Championships along with Kiana, uh, reaching the uh, final stage however she will be back on breaststroke for those main meets of the season and uh, a little tune up on butterfly won't do her confidence any harm at all Next presentation is the men's 100 freestyle. There's Ollie Carter accepting his silver medal with that new Scottish record in the S10 class. And the champion will be Jack Milne from Dundee City Aquatic. He said Ollie Carter finishing faster than Jack Milne. Getting a faster time, but Jack Milne closer to the world record for his classification. So Jack Milne getting the gold medal ahead of Ollie Carter. Well, those two swimmers, two excellent times for those two swimmers. Two swimmers making progress in their respective events. So good to see the para swimmers making those improvements. Men's 100 freestyle. Well, again, it was a battle of the big men in that 100 freestyle. It was a real star-studded field. Craig McLean coming away with the bronze medal. Jack Thorpe with the silver medal. Came back strongly in the end, but couldn't quite challenge the early leader, David Cumberledge, taking the gold medal. And these three swimmers on the podium there, Alan, like real top internationalists. They've got real some experience, those three. They are a Commonwealth Games medalist last year in their own right, David for England, Jack and Craig for Team Scotland on the freestyle relays and uh, hoping very much to form part of the British team next year at the Tokyo Olympic Games if they can qualify the men's 4x100 freestyle and get themselves onto that relay squad. Miles Lapsley, the junior champion from City of Glasgow, didn't take part in the A or the B finals but was the fastest junior from the heats this morning. And that concludes the presentations for the time being. As we move on to the next event, we'll move up to the other end of the pool. It's the sprint events, starting with the women's 50 metre backstroke. Again, no multi-class swimmers in this one. So we're straight into the B final. Holly McGill from Heart of Midlothian going in lane number zero. Barry Swanson, Aberdeen performance in one. Elaine Murray from Brock in two. Charlotte Cullen, Swim Ulster in three. Robin Crawford, City of Glasgow in four. We see Alumsden from Edinburgh University in five. Yasmin Perry and Carolyn McIntosh, the home swimmers. Aberdeen performance. Anna Green from Warrender in eight. And Ellis Shields, Mulgain Bears Den in lane number nine. That's the lineup for this B final. I like the 50s, Alan. It's always get some real close contests at these 50s, but difficult to call this one. 
Robin Crawford, City of Glasgow, 31.06. Just seven one hundreds ahead of Edinburgh University's Alicia Lumsden. Who's your money on this one? Splash and dash, the 50s. <laughs> a couple of very promising young junior swimmers here. Holly McGill and Anna Green from Hearts and Warrender, respectively. And the Edinburgh youngsters doing really well to make this B-final. Yeah, I think Anna Green a big improvement, if I remember rightly, from the heats. She's in one of the early heats. I don't think she was in one of the, the seeded heats and managed to force her way into the B-final. So I wonder if she can improve again. That's Anna Green going right up there in lane number eight, the second from the top lane. Well, she's been headed at the moment. Maybe Yasmin Perry, possibly. Uh, maybe lane number four, Robin Crawford, also going well. Alicia Lumsden challenging to Jasmine Perry and Robin Crawford, I think, coming in to the closing stages now. Charlotte Cullen is also going well, and it is, well, very tight at the end. Seven 100 separating, three 100s, in fact, separating the leading two. And it is Jasmine Perry who gets the touch ahead of Robin Crawford and Charlotte Cullen in third spot. But nothing to choose between these three. Not at all. A bit of versatility there from Yasmin, who's better known as a sprint butterflyer. Doing well to get her hand on the wall in the 30 point. Uh, for viewers wondering about the underwater portion of backstroke, indeed of all the strokes, 15 metres is the legal distance. You can travel off the turns or off the start. So look for these ladies to maximise indeed optimise that 15 metres allowable, particularly in this A, a final where we've got some of our stars from last year's Commonwealth Games, Lucy Hope, Kathleen Doss and Cassie Wild, all three finalists in Gold Coast at that magnificent arena, 10,000 spectators watching heats and finals, one of the backstroke events completed in the pouring rain but did ah. deter from the swimmers some performing some world class times yeah we had some downpours last year in the Gold Coast that is for sure we saw some great performances as well we saw a good performance from Kathleen Dawson this morning 28.43 very good swim there she goes in the centre lane full line up for this one Sarah Hill one of the juniors in lane 0 from Aberdeen Dolphins Iona McLeod another one of the juniors goes in 1 for Dundee City Aquatic Emily Grant University of Stirling in 2 the big three in the centre, Lucy Hope, Kathleen Dawson and Cassie Wilde in three, four and five. Anna Main from Edinburgh University in six. Caitlin Duffy from South Ayrshire in seven. Isabel Jones from University of Stirling in eight. And the third junior, Katie Goodburn from Warrender Baths, goes in lane number nine. Fastest time in the world this year is by our Brazilian Etienne Medeiros. 27.36 seconds to make the top ten. 27.85 and the top 20 just 28.00 so some of these girls in the middle lane's not too far off maybe the world top 25 top 30 if they can uh, get their start and finish right here well if we have to dip under the 28 second mark be close to the Scottish record held by Kathleen Dawson at 27.92 well, Kathleen Dawson will go in lane number four. She's got off to a very good start. Cassie Wild is the one who is pushing Dawson. The two blue caps in the centre here. Kathleen Dawson looks like she's going to take this one. She's forging ahead now into the last five now. We'll have a look at the clock. It's very close to the Scottish record. It's 28.12 for Kathleen Dawson. Just 0.2 of a second outside her own Scottish record. But she wins the battle of her Scottish teammates, Cassie Wilde in second and Lucy Hope in third place. It's a very, very good swim from Kathleen Dawson. Like Hannah Miley, she is recovering from surgery. She suffered an ACL injury on an altitude training camp in the, the autumn of last year. Had surgery, has come back really strongly, was back in the water amazingly quickly after that uh, surgery and has been building herself to there a very very good performance over that 50 backstroke that'll get her into almost the world top 25 and uh, although she's not swimming in any of those international competitions this summer she'll be looking forward to being part of that Scottish team who will uh, travel to California 
to take on the might of US swimming. And Kathleen Dawson was one that, that kind of really came to attention just prior to uh, Rio, wasn't it, in 2016 for the, the European Championships held in the London Aquatic Centre. Had a fantastic championships there. That was her breakthrough competition. She swam there as a, a developmental junior performer and the rules are you can swim four people in the heats but the fastest two make the final. She not only made the final, she won the bronze medal at her first ever senior competition and it's great to see her back on that kind of form again. Uh, men's 50 breaststroke B final, almost ready to go. Lewis Bailey in zero, Andrew Arthur in one, Andrew Hosey in two, Rory Dixon in three, John Keane four, Jack Green in five, Andrew McIntosh in six, Ross Neely in seven, Dermot Sutton in eight and Ross Young in lane number nine again. These 50s are always going to be tight. Maybe in the centre lane. Possibly Jack Green going well. And Andrew McIntosh, the two Edinburgh University swimmers, going really well. But out on the outside lane as well. Ross Young is featuring and his danger all over the pool here. Andrew Hosey also going well in lane two. And Rory Dixon is very close. And it is going to be Andrew Hosey will take that one. And he pulled Rory Dixon through as well to a good time. And, well... The margin at the end, well, nine one hundredths of a second separating the top five, Alan. What a race. Andrew Hosey getting the touch. Really is. Dash for cash, splash and dash, call it what you will. 50s are exciting, they're fast, and uh, very, very often extremely close. And that's uh, just proof of that. Nothing between them at all. It's all about spotting that finish, getting those fingers on the wall, applying the pressure to the touch pad and uh, doing all of that ahead of your competitors well that's exactly what Andrew Hosey did taking that one in at 30.305 swimmers all touching together there we move on to the A final is it going to be as close well we saw some impressive swims in the heats this morning Ben Woodside goes in lane 0 for swim Ulster 2 from the city of Glasgow in 1 and 2 Jack McComish the, the Deaf Olympics champion in the 100 breaststroke a couple of years ago. He swims in lane one next to his teammate Max Hagen. Aaron Dolan from Adrian Monklands in lane number three. Zach Aitchison from University of Stirling. Fastest into this final. Thomas Fardell from Eggersund goes in lane number five. Daniel Lim from Edinburgh University in six. Cameron Muir and Yusuf Batoup from City of Glasgow in 7 and 8 and Ewan Leslie from Edinburgh University going in lane number 9 well, Zach Aitchison 28.18 difficult to see past him based on the heat swims but Daniel Lim's got a busy summer ahead of him as well qualifying third place there he does indeed Danny of course uh, from Malaysia so for them in the most recent World Championships and uh, tuning up like many of the others are this weekend. So Zach Aitchison will be the favourite for this one. In lane number four, the yellow cap of Thomas Fardell may feature as well, but Zach Aitchison has just about got the edge here as he heads ahead of Thomas Fardell. A distinctive at yellow cap. Daniel Lim also going well. Aaron Dolan as well in lane number three. It looks like it's going to be Aitchison though. Zach Aitchison clearly into the wall first. Stretches for the wall in 28.14. Just very slightly faster than he went in the qualification heats with Thomas Fardell in second and Daniel Lim in third position. But Zach Aitchison, well, stretching for the wall at the end there, Zach Aitchison. Already done his post-race analysis, looking down at his coach, and I think the non-verbal communication said it all. Sorry, coach, I had to stretch too far for the wall, otherwise it would have gone <laughs> under 28 seconds. It was good enough for the win, though, for Zach Aitchison, but all these swimmers at the top level, all perfectionists, I mean, they want to be absolutely perfect in every race, and, and you, you kind of have to be in the, the big international competitions. When you come to these major championships, there is absolutely no margin of error. None at all. Uh, very tightly bunched, as we saw in the races we've had over the last few minutes. And getting the start, getting the timing of the breakout, and, of course, the stroke count right to finish strongly on the pad is key to success on all of the 50s. This will be a very, very 
a hotly contested race at the World Championships. Of course, Great Britain's Adam Peaty, Olympic champion, world record holder, will very much be the man to beat. But as things stand, he's not at the top of the world rankings and uh, will certainly be looking to sort that out in Korea <laughs> in, uh, in a few weeks' time. Well, it'll be a brave man you would bet against. Adam Peaty has been absolutely dominant in the breaststroke over the past few years. Certainly in the 100, he's, it's been absolutely incredible, Adam Peaty, hasn't he? He has. Uh, we're there for the his first ever world record, uh, which he set in the London Olympic pool to qualify uh, for the World Championships just uh, a few years ago. And he's really gone from strength to strength at that point. Olympic champion, world record holder. And uh, he's been on the European circuit these last few weeks, uh, racing, fine-tuning, measuring himself up against some of his rivals in uh, Barcelona and Cannes and in Rome. And uh, he'll be going back now just to put the final touches to his preparations with his coach, uh, Mel Marshall, at Loughborough. And will join the British team as they depart um, in uh, just over a week's time to Korea for their holding camp. And of course, Scotland's own Ross Murdoch as well be part of that team James will be another top breaststroker as well who's come through the last couple of years has won that Commonwealth gold ahead of Ross Murdoch uh, last year in the Gold Coast so but Britain great plethora of talent in breaststroke it's a breaststroke factory um, <laughs> going uh, back to Anita Lonsborough David Wilkie more recently my uh, swimming hero and then of course Adrian Muirhouse Nick Gilliam Adam Peaty, Michael Jameson, the list goes on. It's uh, fantastic and we're blessed with breaststroke talent to be proud of. Well, it's 200 metre freestyle talent on show now. Mitchell Masson taking the bronze medal. Lucy Hope with that silver medal. And Catherine Greenslade. Completes the Edinburgh University 1 2 3 and she will take the open gold medal. Top Scott is Lucy Hope, she'll take the Scottish gold medal. And the junior swimmer, the only junior to make it through into the A or the B final, Ellie Hamilton from first, the Falkirk Integrated Regional Swim Team. She will take that Scottish junior title. Yeah, another. Good contest, you've seen some good contests, I think that 200 freestyle, good battle between Kat Greenslade and Lucy Hope at the front of the field. It is competitive, there's no question about that, without wishing to be too critical. The world standard is significantly better than we've seen here this evening and the challenge for our Great Britain ladies is to get themselves as far under two minutes as they can. Catherine has been down at uh, 156 last year and if she and her teammates can uh, threaten those kind of times then they'll certainly be in with a shout in that Olympic final against the might of Australia as I mentioned the USA of course are perennial strong uh, favourites for most really events and uh, other nations uh, besides standards are always on the increase and with it being just 15 or so months away from those Olympic Games then Plenty of places to uh, to swim for. Yeah, absolutely. Our trials, well, less than a year away for those Olympic Games. Hard to believe the Olympics are, are just a year away again. Our time just seems to be flying. We must be getting old, Alan. Well, <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> um, it's a really exciting time to be involved in swimming, to be involved in sport. We've had uh, lots of development since the Rio Olympic Games. And not least of which is the professionalisation of some competitive events where the athletes themselves are able to earn some money for their, for their expertise, for their form and, and of course for their, uh, their effort. The presentations going ahead for the 200 metres butterfly, Mark Elric, with the bronze medal, Thomas Payne the silver and the champion Tom Bailey from Plymouth and they really dominated that one with Mark Ford from City of Glasgow taking the Scottish Junior title. Mark Ford, another one who's was, was very good as a, a very young swimmer. I remember seeing his name in the, the record books as like a 10-year-old. And he's, he's coming through. He's still breaking age group records as he moves through the age groups. He is. The young man has just sat his uh, Nat 5 exams here in Scotland. Uh, just finished fourth year, heading into his fifth year of high school. 
which he will do and uh, complete before he makes his decisions about what to do as a senior swimmer, part of the highly successful City of Glasgow swim team, coached by Ian Wright, assisted ably by Daniel Brayson and Lewis Smith, one of our former international swimming stars, and uh, great to see them and uh, Scotland's largest city swim team going from strength to strength. Well, Mark Ford, one of that successful City of Glasgow stable. And we have one of his teammates going in this one, which is the B final of the women's 400 metres individual medley. Again, no more multi classification swims for us to enjoy tonight. Well, the B final of this one is 400 metres individual medley. Kaelin Hall going in lane zero for Aberdeen Performance. Drew McKenzie from City of Glasgow going in lane number one. Emir Doyle and Hannah Oshi from Munster. They go in two and three. Jacqueline McMillan from Carnegie goes in four. Scarlett Ferris from Dundee City Aquatics goes in lane number five. Holly McGill from Heart of Midlothian in six. Jen Murray from North Ayrshire in lane number seven. Alicia Bain from Aberdeen Performance goes in eight. Madeline Robertson from Mijas in Spain back in again over there in lane number nine. The fastest into this B final was Jacqueline McMillan from Carnegie in 5.13.13 but that was a massive improvement from our heat time. Some five or six second improvement there for Jacqueline McMillan. wonder if she can continue that good improvement for her time. It's going to be a tough ask here. No five bias there of course uh, Paul, the, the, the kingdom where you come from. 400 IM is a really interesting event. It's, uh, it's tactical in terms of Summers uh, changing positions. It's very, very uh, challenging in terms of the physiology involved and uh, technically uh, also difficult in terms of switching from stroke to stroke, not losing any speed, not losing any momentum. Uh, Scarlett Ferris, I think, will be a little bit disappointed she didn't make that A final this morning. Uh, she's going out much better, much stronger on the butterfly here. Uh, better known as a backstroker probably, so look for her to build the lead that she's established. Out in the far away lane as we look at it is also a uh, favoured butterflyer, Mary Robertson, who won that B final of the girls' 100 uh, earlier on this evening. But Ferris it is who takes the uh, 100 touch, 107.59. That's a couple of seconds faster than she went this morning. Another Pfeiffer, she swims for Dundee, Scarlett Ferris, 107.59 there, as you said Alan, just a second and a half or so an advantage here, she is stretching away on this backstroke, but Maddie Robertson going well in that outside lane, and also coming through strongly as well, Holly McGill for Heart of Midlothian, one of the younger swimmers in this one, Holly McGill and Drew McKenzie, just 14 years of age, this year, so they are the two youngsters in this one with monster swimmer Amir Doyle, 18 years of age, the oldest swimmer in this particular field. So teenagers all the way here, and Scarlett Ferris is holding on to that lead, but it's been a very good backstroke for Holly McGill as she comes in down towards the halfway point. Scarlett Ferris under a little bit of pressure here as Holly McGill, the youngster. He's now pulling back very, very strongly here. And at halfway point, and it looks like we might just have Holly McGill taking the lead here ahead of Scarlett Ferris. Yeah, 0.2 of a second the difference. Holly McGill takes that one, but the breaststroke very often the important stroke on a 400 IM. It is. It's the slowest stroke of the four. It offers the most scope to make big gains because of that. And at the speed these uh, young ladies are going, Fantastic opportunity to establish yourself towards the end of the race and uh, pick up on your opponents. Uh, this certainly where um, Jacqueline McMillan broke through or edged through in the heats this morning and she's looking to do the same thing again against Holly McGill and Scarlett Ferris on her left-hand side. Yeah, I know she as well, featuring in that top four. So the four fastest swimmers from qualification... Uh, the top four in this B final 
as they go over that breaststroke turn. McMillan and O'Shea absolutely together. Three 100 separating those two. Scarlett Ferris holding off the challenge from Holly McGill. Half to Midlothian there. Scarlett Ferris now just with the edge here. And I think Ferris may well just lead them as they come into this final of the breaststroke. They'll move into the freestyle. So Very important as well, Alan. If you get in ahead on that breaststroke, the others are swimming breaststroke, you're on the freestyle. You can get an advantage if you get a good turn on that freestyle. Press the freestyle. As the swimmers transition from one stroke to the other, it is a great opportunity to gain some ground on your rivals, just as in uh, other sports where you're changing from one thing to another. Triathlon, for example, the transition's key. And that was a great turn in relation to her uh, main rivals there from Scarlett Ferris. Good pace into the wall, nice snappy turn, and uh, off she goes. Already gained a couple of metres on Holly McGill. Yeah, Holly McGill now trying to hold on to second position, coming under threat now. Han O'Shea and Jacqueline McMillan. Emir Doyle coming back into the picture as well. The 18 year old in the closing stages, not sure that she is going to challenge the top four positions. Scarlett Ferris has paced this race well. She is going to try and hold on. The challenge now from Jacqueline McMillan and Hannah O'Shea and Holly McGill. All three swimmers absolutely together here, challenging for second position. And Jacqueline McMillan showing real strength here, trying to pull back on Scarlett Ferris. Holly McGill holding on. I think it's going to be third place for Holly McGill. McMillan has left it late. I'm not sure she is going to catch Scarlett Ferris here. Scarlett Ferris just holding on to the top spot and she will take that one Scarlett Ferris in ahead of Jacqueline McMillan well the scoreboard here has gone blank which quite often means it's not good news for someone Alan we may well see a disqualification we'll have to wait for the official result but it was a good contest in the end wasn't it it was, certainly was and uh, nice improvements from the heat swims this morning 5.09 for the top two there Scarlett Ferris and Jacqueline McMillan and uh, that's just about on the time it would have taken to make the A final, which is uh, coming up. So nice improvements, great racing, and a good execution of skills. Yeah, Ferris taking it, 509.08 ahead of McMillan and McGill. And that make that around about a 10 second improvement on the day for Jacqueline McMillan. Very good swim from her. Terrific, terrific improvement and uh, testimony to the hard work. I'm sure that she's doing in Carnegie with uh, Coach Morag Mitchell. Oh, we did have a disqualification in those results. Jen Murray from North Ayrshire was disqualified in that 400 metres individual medley B final. Didn't affect the top three places. And it was a good race, a good contest for that one. Move on to the A final now. And, well, we've seen some big names this evening. And we're due to see another one here in this final. Hannah Miley due to take the start in lane number four. Here are the swimmers coming out for this A final of the 400 metres individual medley. Hannah Miley, always a stalwart of the Scottish National Championships. We've seen her, well, throughout the years do maybe six or seven or eight events throughout the four days. She, she just loves being tough, doesn't she? She does, and she sees racing, as do most top class swimmers, as part of her training. She swam this morning in this pool before the heat session started. For, she swam for a couple of hours with the rest of her teammates and uh, her coach, her dad, Pat, uh, Patrick Miley. She swam in the heats. She's been off to recover this afternoon and then back for, for these finals. So this is forming part of her preparation. It's not a competition in and of itself. It's an opportunity for her to get some race practice, to get some high-quality uh, physiological gains from those races and of course to win a national title and maybe push herself up the world rankings uh, as she approaches the bigger summer meets. Well, Hannah Miley will be in the centre. The line up for this one, Katie Taylor, City of Glasgow in zero. Victoria Catterson, Swim Ulster in one. Ellie Turner, the junior swimmer from Carnegie, goes in two. Orla Adams and Hannah Miley, Aberdeen Performance Swimmers in three and four. Yvonne Brown from South Lanarkshire in five. Kaya Alcaraz from Aberdeen Performance in six. Katie McKenzie, City of Glasgow in seven. Next to her teammate Emma Scully and Iona McLeod, the second junior 
from Dundee City Aquatic goes in lane number nine. Hannah Miley, well, she's won major accolades in this event. This is her favoured event on the international stage, Hannah Miley. 30 years of age this year, she has had a glittering career and it's not over yet for Hannah Miley. We certainly hope not. It's a slow build up to the Olympic Games in Tokyo next year. This is very much a part of a preparations uh, for that. Not going to the World Championships as we have already said but in this her favoured event I'm sure she'll be looking to just put a marker down for some of her rivals who will be in Korea um, and also put a marker down for our domestic rivals here in Great Britain. So Hannah Miley featuring in the shake-up for the lead in the early stages. Iona McLeod going well on the outside lane as well but it's Guy Alcaraz from Aberdeen who gets the touch on the first 50 just ahead of Yvonne Brown. Hannah Miley well probably in the mix for around about fourth or fifth position. Pulling through strongly now as they came off that turn. Very slight figure of Yvonne Brown has impressed me over the last couple of years. She is a great technician, Yvonne Brown. She's been very good in the individual medal and the breaststroke as well. Very strong, Yvonne Brown. So watch out for her. She's still, again, a young swimmer, just 17 years of age this year. That's Hannah Miley. Just hits the front there as they go through the 100 mark and onto the backstroke. Anna Miley just has the advantage now ahead of Brown. And a guy Alcaraz as well. Just one lane up from Yvonne Brown. Reaching for the wall just a little bit there, Hannah Miley. But um, now, after that successful transition, pushing ahead of the rest of the field as we would expect in her main event. 65 point on that fly. A couple of seconds down on what she would be doing at her absolute uh, tip top best but I think we saw the experience of Hannah Miley showing through she wasn't first to the 50 but she was comfortably first to the first hundred and that just showed the smart pacing of the experienced campaigner here leading from the front being pressed a little bit by Ellie Turner from Carnegie on her main stroke back stroke Hannah uh, Outstanding breaststroker in her own right as she switches at this halfway mark in the 400 IM will look to consolidate and uh, extend her lead here. So 2.19.87 under the 2.20 mark, a good uh, opportunity for Hannah to finish strongly. Yeah, Ellie Turner came through the junior swimmer trying to claim that junior title, maybe trying to force her way onto the podium for the senior title as well, she's in a good position as they go on to the breaststroke low, Orla Adams coming through strongly and she is now on the tail of her teammate Hannah Miley Orla Adams with that white cap going through into second position but Hannah Miley very strong on the second half of her 400 metres individual medley and she is just ahead now by around about three seconds from her teammate Orla Adams who's clear in third position Guy Alcaraz probably just challenging Ellie Turner for fourth place now and sorry Yvonne Brown actually moving through into third position with that blue cap of South Lanarkshire into third place Ellie Turner now down into fourth but she is ahead of the other junior in this final which is Iona McLeod with a pink cap right up there in lane number nine. But Hannah Miley, well, looking very, very good, Alan. She comes into the end of this breaststroke. Commanding, I think, was the word that uh, we used earlier on, and that's certainly what Hannah Miley is doing, commanding her way through this 400 IM. A very long, efficient breaststroke leg, taking her away from the rest of the field. Turned in three minutes, 40 seconds. So she'll be looking at the, the mid 440s, which is around about her in-season times uh, this season already and uh, something for her to reflect on, to analyse and, and to build on. But she's certainly going to be the winner, there's no question, there never was any question about that. Just a question of how fast and how hard she pushes this last 50. 
Oh, Hannah Miley with a lead now, four and a half seconds ahead of Orla Adams, who is in a good position now to claim the silver medal position. But Hannah Miley will try and push this one to see how far she can go in this 400 metres individual medley into the closing stages now. She's going to be somewhere around about the mid 440s. Or Hannah Miley, clock just taking over at 445, and Hannah Miley is in, well, I think that's around about 4.46 or so for Hannah Miley. Orla Adams in second position. And it looks like Yvonne Brown in third place there with Ellie Turner will be the first junior home with that close contest with Gaia Alcaraz for fourth position. Well, the scoreboard has gone blank again, Alan, which, again, might mean bad news for someone. We'll wait and see who it might be. The result is confirmed now on the scoreboard here in the arena. Hannah Miley taking that one, 447.11. Orla Adams, 452.92. And Yvonne Brown in third spot. All the top three, the only ones under the five minutes. And Ellie Turner, the top junior, five minutes, 0.97 for Ellie. And there was a disqualification. It was Victoria Catterson was disqualified there in lane number one. But... Hannah Miley, another Scottish title for her. I wonder if Hannah knows how many Scottish Open titles that she's won. There must be a... Oh, well, I, I would hate to guess. Several. <laughs> several, yes. Many several. Well, how many years has she competed in the Scottish Championship? Uh, 20 years? 15 at least, maybe? 15 at least, yeah. Probably uh, 2003 or four would be her first uh, National Open Championships. Been in international summer since 2005 at the European Junior Championships where she first swam against the Olympic champion and lifelong rival Katinka Hosu and they'll be looking to renew that rivalry through next season as they build up hopefully towards the Tokyo Olympic Games a uh, great competitor Hannah Miley we must ask her if she knows that uh, stat if she's uh, how many national championships she's got 15 years she probably wins maybe or at least three or four possibly at these national championships you know it's <laughs> it's a phenomenal record and she just keeps coming back for more absolutely superb everyone speaks very highly of Hannah Miley Wisher every success and every come everybody gets behind her they do she was here last weekend at the camp we ran with swim wheels for a youth development summers she spoke to them about her journey about the things that she had learned giving them some tips in and out of the water she was joined by Welsh swimmer Jazz Carlin, double Olympic silver medalist from Rio, behind the great Katie Ledecky. And uh, Hannah and Jazz really were the Rolls Royce version of uh, senior swimmer experience for those youngsters last weekend. Had a fantastic time learning uh, from them and being supported by them. So, all the very, very best to Hannah for the rest of uh, this season. Well, you couldn't think of it too better role models for the youngsters to learn from it's the 50 metre backstroke medalist now there's the three big names who came up with the top three medals, Lucy Hope taking the bronze medal Cassie Wild the silver but an excellent swim there from Kathleen Dawson Scottish record holder, just point two of a second outside her own Scottish record mark, right Back on form is Kathleen Dawson. She really is, uh, known as KD to her friends and uh, coaches. Super swim from KD. Um, gave the others a KO. <laughs> oh, you've been saving that one up. I you? have. <laughs> Junior champion was Iona McLeod from Dundee City Aquatic. He is just swum in that 400 metres individual medley. The busy night, Iona McLeod. Iona is off to the European Junior Open Water Swimming Championships uh, very shortly. They qualified uh, for that and uh, is very much looking forward to being part of that British Junior team. Open Water, of course, now an Olympic event. It used to be called Marathon uh, Swimming and uh, its popularity is growing with every event it's not quite as popular as things like marathon runs or uh, great north runs and so on but uh, the great swim series domestically here in great britain 
has been a tremendous success over the last few years, introducing people to open water, both at the competitive and the participation level. And Iona, one of our promising juniors, goes to those open water junior championships yeah. with their very best wishes. Yeah, I was at the European Championships last year in Loch Lomond. Great spectacle, but the stamina and the, the strength of these open water athletes, absolutely incredible. So they, they swim for, well, the 25 kilometre race lasted for about five hours. It was absolutely amazing and it was a, came down to a sprint finish at the end. It often does, uh, no matter what the distance or uh, the venue that uh, the races are being held. It's, uh, it's sprint finishes all the way and often the fastest pool swimmer emerges as the winner in open water despite the fact that uh, it's a much, much longer distance than they would ever compete in this uh, long course or short course venue. Medalist for the 50 breaststroke. On the podiums at the moment, Daniel Lim taking the bronze, Thomas Fardell, the silver and Zach Aitchison taking that gold medal. And Jamie Littlefield from Warren de Bath is the top junior setting that time in the heat this morning so Jamie Littlefield taking that junior title the 15 year old swimmer presentations complete for this 50 breaststroke and from the 50 presentation well we move on to the distance events now 1500 freestyle the longest Pool event, and we'll see. We talked about the open water there, Alan, but not quite as long as the open water swims. But 1500 freestyle, 16 minutes is the fastest qualification time for this one. Jack Bonsell from Cambridge University. Best open water swimmers are the best distance swimmers in the pool. 800 or 1500 free for men and women. Very much the place where potential is spotted and swimmers and their talent is nurtured towards open water swimming. Uh, 16 minutes, a reasonable target, I think, uh, for some of these young men swimming in this final. Interestingly, just last weekend in Rome at the Seven Hills, the Setecoli meet in the... Uh, City and the jewel and the crown of uh, Italian cities. Uh, the meet happens every single year, just like this one at the back end of June. And uh, Simone Quadrella uh, swam 15 minutes and 48 seconds, which is, mm. by my arithmetic, 12 seconds or so faster than the entry time for these uh, young men. So standards, as I said before, are increasing all of the time. Katie Ledecky's world record is literally out of this world and no one is close to touching that. Set in the rain and Gold Coast at the Pan Packs just a few years ago. But uh, 16 minutes looks like a reasonable target out front here. But if any of these young men can get off to uh, a good start and hold the pace. For others it's about holding pace, it's about setting their own standards and improving their own personal best times. So over to you to introduce them Paul. Yeah, we'll see if anyone can improve those times. Uh, the swimmers here, the eight swimmers taking part in this fastest heat of the men's 1500 metres freestyle. Cameron Travis from Aberdeen Performance. 15 year old goes in lane number one. Angus Allison from Warren de Bass goes in lane number two. Liam McLaughlin is Warren their teammate. He will go in lane number three. Jack Bonsell. Favourite for this one, Cambridge Uni, a 20-year-old, goes in lane number four. Daniel Ferguson from West Lothian in five. Marshall Illingworth in six from City of Glasgow. Thomas Jeffers in seven from Perth City. And John Taylor from Aberdeen Performance in lane number eight. Three juniors in this one. That's the two in the outside lanes, Cameron Travis and John Taylor from Aberdeen Performance and Angus Allison. So a junior, he goes in lane number two for Warren de Bath. So the junior title up for grabs alongside the Open title and the Scottish title as well. Jack Bonsell, well, the fastest entry time, not a Scot. So the fight for the Scottish title will be between the others in this field. 30 lengths of this long course pool. 
and pretty close in the early stages as you would expect until things get sorted out 29.08 for Jack Bonsell up that first 50 nice long loping stroke from from Jack looking to establish his rhythm establish a good pace and tempo at the start of this 1500 or the mile as it's uh, known in other parts of the world the metric mile 61.45 nice comfortable start he's being matched all the way at the moment uh, by a couple of Warrender swimmers Liam McLaughlin and uh, Angus Allison really not much to choose between the first half dozen or so swimmers as they just find themselves in that rhythm of course everything counts it may be 1500 it may be 16 or so minutes but every meter every stroke every ton um, counts um, and getting into that rhythm getting into the right tempo is crucial the pacing is important but if you lose concentration at any point during this race then you'll stand to perhaps take away from your overall performance well yeah if you lose whatever quarter of a second on each turn that's going to mount up the number of turns we've got in this 1500 freestyle Liam McLaughlin has gone out in 207.59 for Liam Marsha Illingworth in second position just half a second behind here Liam McLaughlin They're looking to get into this pace I see this 1500 freestyle swim in slightly different ways people maybe trying to build as they go through it people trying to maybe maintain their pace in every 100 as they go through the race too early really to uh, make any predictions about how the race is going to figure out because those pacing strategies can vary from swimmer to swimmer most traditional methods would be either say some a negative split second half faster than the first or build through the 500s or three 500s set the tone set the pace in the first one build through the second one and then progress through the last one trying to finish as uh, fast and strongly as possible but 66 seconds was the second hundred and that's probably just about the same again 66 seconds for Liam McLaughlin so maybe not quite on the uh, pace to go under the 16 minutes but certainly if he can build from that then he uh, stands to put himself in a good position to win that national title yeah, he's gone out pretty well there Liam McLaughlin certainly ahead of Marshall Illingworth over in lane number 6 but Illingworth just maybe challenging as they come to this turn again we'll go over at the 400 metre mark as we get down to this bottom end we'll keep an eye on the pace as we're going through it's just into the 105 range that previous 100 105.7 for Liam McLaughlin so that is uh, stretched him away from the swimmers in the centre Daniel Ferguson and Jack Bonsill the two pre-race favourites now lagging behind the two on either side of them and that's Liam McLaughlin and Marshall Illingworth Marshall Illingworth just about half a second now behind Liam McLaughlin 418.75 again in the 105.5 range so keeping this pace going Alan will when they get to the bottom end the next time it'll be the one third distance 400 gone still a long way to go in this one there is but uh, it's amazing just how much of a difference 100 150 meters or so can make they were very tightly bunched together not that long ago but what's happening is that uh, Liam McLaughlin is maintaining his pace and most of the others are slowing down perhaps indicating that they were too fast over that uh, first two or three hundred meters it certainly looks like this one's shaping up now Liam McLaughlin and Marsha Illingworth are the two who are now stretching away from the others the two in the centre and also down there in lane number one Cameron Travis having a good swim one of the junior swimmers leading the tussle for the junior title at the moment ahead of Angus Allison 
And John Taylor over there in lane number eight. So Cameron Travis, 15 year old from Aberdeen Performance. He's got the edge over Angus Allison in these early stages here. Another oh, 65 point from Liam, so settled into that pace nicely. And his entry time 1622.44. Holding this pace would allow him to be significantly under that. Yeah, that red cap of Liam McLaughlin. Famous Warrender Baths cap. We used to see him that red cap featuring a number of the races at the Scottish events. A historic club, the Warrender Baths Club from Edinburgh. Like Marshall Illingworth just a little bit of a spurt on there, but a very good turn for Liam McLaughlin. Took him clear of the city of Glasgow man. It's Edinburgh against Glasgow here, Alan. And uh, it was good skills there around the wall from Liam McLaughlin, just maintaining that lead. Nice to, uh, nice turn, nice and tight off the wall, not wasting too much energy, but gaining good distance from a streamline driving off the wall and uh, that's just a slight pick up in pace from him whether deliberate or just uh, applying one of those pacing strategies effectively but Marcel Ellingworth an experienced distance swimmer himself also an open water swimmer and will certainly have the endurance to stick around with Liam McLaughlin City of Glasgow as we mentioned earlier, and Warrender having a camp in Calea in Spain over the last couple of weeks, getting their athletes into final good shape for the rest of the summer season. 7.35.2 for Illingworth, a tenth of a second just behind that is uh, Liam McLaughlin. Yeah, Illingworth taking up the running for the first time in this 1500 there. And Liam McLaughlin, well, he did seem to be better off the wall, but I think Illingworth is just forging ahead now as they come up to the halfway point. We're only at the 7.50 mark here. And it looks like Illingworth is going to extend that very slight lead that he had. It's only 0.3 of a second. Nothing decisive, of course, at this point in time. They're only the halfway point. And again, looked again like McLaughlin had that better turn, just Keep him in, in contention there with Marshall Illingworth. The angle we're looking at might be slightly deceptive, but there's not much in it at all between Liam McLaughlin and Marshall Illingworth. Illingworth with the slightly faster turnover, slightly smaller in stature. McLaughlin a little bit longer and leaner. Another good streamline off uh, that wall. 8.40 at the 800 mark. Another 65 point for both boys there. Yeah, they're certainly stretching their lead over the others in this field. The two juniors are in third and fourth position at the moment. That's Cameron Travis just holding off the challenge of Angus Allison in lane one and two. Jack Bonsell in lane number four challenging the two youngsters here. That looks like that is going to be the tussle for the junior title though John Taylor in lane number 8 is not too far behind maybe around about 5 or 6 metres behind the two leading juniors at this point but at the head of the field it looks like Marshall Illingworth is just beginning to get a little bit of distance between himself and Liam McLaughlin as they come down to the 900 mark the lead was 0.3 of a second. It's around about one second now, 1.2 of a second. So Ellingworth just very, very gradually increasing that distance. It's not a major move. It's just a gradual winding up, increasing of pace. Ellingworth swimming it with really smart pacing. He's not getting significantly faster. Just a little bit each 100, a little bit each 50. Forcing the issue, knowing that he still has five or six minutes left of uh, swimming, therefore five or six minutes of energy he has to disperse in an efficient way. But making his move significantly, Liam McLaughlin struggling to stay with 
this pace now, um, probably going to be a couple of seconds down up to uh, this next mark. And the next point will be the 1,000 metre mark, so there'll be two thirds gone for the leading two swimmers here. Marshall Illingworth increasing that lead, I would say. We'll have a look at the splits here. Yeah, 1.8 seconds the difference between Illingworth and McLaughlin now. 5.24 they were at the 500 and 10.51 at the 1000 so 5.24, 5.26 reasonably even pace swimming if you take away the fact that they had a dive start at the beginning of the race so possibly under the 16.20 mark for Marshall Illingworth which is uh, a little bit underneath his entry time Swimmers will be pleased to get any sort of improvement. Get close to their entry times. Both McLaughlin and Illingworth both entered in 16.22. Well matched in terms of the entry times. In terms of that tussle for third position, Angus Allison is just heading Cameron Travis here. And Angus Allison will could be a double whammy for Angus Allison. Not only is he looking for a bronze medal in the senior event but he's going to win the junior title as well so a lot riding on this junior tussle here in lanes one and two but Angus Allison certainly made a move here and he's uh, decisively ahead of his competitor now Cameron Travis leading two going through Marshall Ellingworth still stretching that lead just almost every stroke now ahead of Liam McLaughlin well, McLaughlin is going to have his work cut out to catch Marshall Illingworth now, but he's not going to be caught for second position. Coming up with uh, 300 metres to go as they reach the bottom end. Marshall Illingworth swam this really well. wonder what Liam McLaughlin's got left in the tank for the closing stages here. Illingworth now clear water between himself and Liam McLaughlin. Looks like Glasgow might be coming out on top with this battle against Edinburgh on this occasion. City of Glasgow's Marshall Illingworth, 13.02.32. The lead is three seconds ahead of Liam McLaughlin now. Another 65 from Marshall Illingworth, so just increased his pace compared to Liam McLaughlin, who's fading a little bit more than uh, I'm sure he and uh, his teammates would like. Some of Marshall's... Uh, coaching staff and teammates from City of Glasgow over on that far side cheering him on as he turns with 250 metres to go little telltale sign of fatigue there as the swimmers just hesitate going into the wall taking in that extra gulp of oxygen that they think they need and uh, Marcel Illingworth uh, very much guilty of that there but he's managing to try and pick up his pace he has 200 metres to go at this uh, next turn Let's see what his time is. It was 13 minutes 02 at uh, the last mark. He looks like he's just beginning to fade all the way there. Breathing to both sides into the wall. 14.08. Well, that's a 65 point high. Almost 66. Yeah, almost exactly on 66. 105.99 there for Marshall Ingworth. It is... Getting to be hard work now for Marshall Illingworth. Like he's really toiling to keep that pace going, but he's working hard. He's only got a couple of hundred to go, so he's in good shape now. But McLaughlin, can he pull something back now, McLaughlin? Well, just seeing a, a slight reduction in pace for Marshall Illingworth. The gap now is around about 2.4 seconds now for McLaughlin behind Illingworth. I just wonder if... There's going to be something spectacular here as they come down to 100 metres to go. And I wonder if anyone will get a little bit of a boost when they hear the bell when they come down to this bottom end. Marshall Illingworth is going to be the first to hear that bell. But the lead certainly isn't what it was a couple of hundred ago, Alan. It's not 15-14-0. The swimmers have an expression that I know you'll be familiar with, Paul. Sammy Saber. When you're doing a training set and you just ease back a little bit on the, the last few to save yourself for a final big effort on the last one. And uh, that's 
hopefully what Liam McLaughlin thinks he's done but Illingworth is beginning to pick up his pace on this uh, last 100 as well. Characteristic that they'll be faster on this last 100 because of that extra effort and because of the fact that they're going to finish on their hands and not on the turn. 50 metres to go. Well, they are both working really hard here. This one is not over by any means here. Marshall Ellingworth and Liam McLaughlin. It is going to be a really close finish here. Marshall Ellingworth just with the edge, I think. But McLaughlin looking the stronger now. Has he got anything left in the tank here? McLaughlin is coming past Ellingworth. And what a great finish for Liam McLaughlin. He is going to take this 1500 freestyle title. What a superb last couple of hundred there for Liam McLaughlin. 116 point it's sorry 16 16.49 for Liam McLaughlin he will take that ahead of Marsha Illingworth 16 18.04 what a superb last hundred there for Liam McLaughlin the bronze medal well it's going to go to the junior Angus Allison will take the bronze and he will also be the junior champion it's a close race for four three swimmers all coming in together and the top three though away and clear but what a finish that was Liam McLaughlin pulled out the bag thought he was dead and buried and uh, lo and behold Sammy Saver struck again <laughs> great last hundred really strong effort uh, Ellingworth gave it all he had but uh, we're just pipped at the post uh, congratulations to both boys for an excellent effort and an excellent improvement on their entry times well, Marshall Ellingworth, 1618.04. So that was a 104 flat, pretty much, for Marshall Illingworth in that last one. So Liam McLaughlin was significantly faster. Maybe a 61, possibly, for that last 100. Possibly, yep. It, uh, that's, incidentally, that was what he did for his first 100. Again, not unusual in a 1500 for those two uh, 100s that, uh, that sandwiched the race and the, the middle 1300 to be the same sort of time so congratulations to him all that uh, training in the sun seems to have paid off and uh, he and his coach will be well pleased uh, a little bit of a notch to uh, to the east there uh, getting one over on the west swimmer and uh, very pleasing for Warrender to finish the individual events with a win of course we have one final event the relay, first of the relays at these National Open Championships, the women's 4x200 uh, freestyle. We have a couple of heats of that. And uh, not surprisingly, we have one of our going again here and will certainly be challenging for top spot in this event. Yeah, City of Glasgow as well. I've got a team in this one as well as the home team from Aberdeen Performance. Two heats of this relay for us to enjoy and the uh, times from both heats they won't progress to a final it'll just be heat declared winners so the times from the two heats will be compared second heat is likely to see the faster teams in it the big names in that second heat presentations to come as well for the final two individual events and that was a cracking 1500 I love a close 1500 freestyle and that's how it proved at the end we thought it was all getting a little bit stretched out as we're going through the middle of that race and the two swimmers at the front well they gave us a good spectacle at the end there very often that's uh, exactly what happens even though it's a long distance race we're just talking about how close it can be for open water swimming with a sprint finish and so it proved on that uh, longest event in the pool the men's 1500 Congratulations to Liam. Commiserations to Marshall, but both boys doing a really good job. 400 metres individual medley medalists. Now coming out for their presentations. And the great Hannah Miley on the top spot. Von Brown taking uh, bronze medal. Very well done to her. She and her East Kilbride, the teammates, celebrated 50 years of East Kilbride swim team just a couple of weeks ago with a gala dinner and auction. Fantastic event. Swimmers from maybe not as far ago as uh, 50 years, but certainly plenty of former swimmers and coaches there to celebrate Yvonne's club 
congratulations to her and to them for 50 years of successful swimming. Yeah, and still on the podium at the national championships as well. With Yvonne Brown, Ola Adams, silver medalist Hannah Miley, of course, taking another Scottish title and the junior title winner. And they're towering above Hannah Miley there on the podium, Ellie Turner from Carnegie. Congratulations to her and to those ladies, uh, most of whom I think are going to feature in the second tee of this women's 4x200 metres freestyle, the longest of the really events for men and for women and as I mentioned earlier now a mixed team event two men and two women on some of the international uh, meet programs uh, remains to be seen whether that will spread out over all events waiting of course to hear about the final program of events for the Birmingham Commonwealth Games in 2022 and uh, an exciting prospect of some mixed relays uh, taking part in that competition it adds a bit of a, a different dimension, doesn't it? Last year so. at Toe Cross, some of the most exciting races were those mixed relays. Uh, Frey Anderson's final leg in the mixed freestyle will uh, long live in the memory as she ate down the metres and uh, absolutely powered her way home. And uh, let's hope for more of that kind of success for the British team just in a few short weeks' time as they take on the rest of the world in Korea. Yeah, the British team very successful last year in this uh, the European Championships held right here in Scotland, in Glasgow. Duncan Scott winning the title in his home patch at Toll Cross. Very exciting right there. And Hannah Miley, we've just seen her, also a medalist at the European Championships as well. So Great still. success for the British team. Of course, we're back in Glasgow for the British Summer Championships uh, at the end of July, then again in December for the European Short Course Championships and back here in Aberdeen in just 12 months time for the European Junior Championships 2020. Yeah, spoilt with the facilities here in Scotland, that's for sure. Major events taking place here over the past few years. So we go for the first of the two heats of the 4x200 metres freestyle relay for women. Four teams in this one. Uh, closest to us are the team from Dumfries. They're led off by Gemma McLeod. We have one of the visitors from Ireland, the Munster team. They go in lane number four. Jodie Baker leads them off. Swim All-Star. Another one of the Irish teams, Millie McLorum, going on the first leg for them. And the team from right up here, in the northeast of Scotland, the Brock, Natalie Bruce. For those for not familiar team. with Scottish northeast <laughs> geography, the Brock is Fraserburgh. Great to see a small club able to put in a girls' team for four by two and a three star. Really fantastic that they've got the resource to do that, the conditioning, and of course the courage to take part in what's one of the more grueling events for youngsters. Getting the pace right for each of the four 200 metre swimmers is key, and it's a pretty keen race out in front here. Yeah, very good start there. The two Irish teams in the centre lanes, Munster, in the lower of those yellow lanes. But it is Swim Ulster who are leading them through, Millie McLaurin. That's a team of 14 year olds, the Swim Ulster team, the youngest team in this one team from the Brock has got three 14 year olds and a 16 year old so also a junior team so a lot of young talent on show here in this first heat and a very good opening here for Millie McLaurin she'll hand over to Ellie McCartney on the second leg for Swim Ulster real tussle now between Dumfries and Munster for second position Jodie Baker just holding off the challenge of Gemma McLeod and as we come into the first changeover Ellie McLaurin will do that changeover to Ellie McCartney very very close for second there Jody Baker for Munster handing over to Beth Nolan and Amy Harkness in for Dumfries Lisa Marie Calder 
now takes over from Natalie Bruce and things getting very stretched out at the front but very good start for Ellie McCartney increasing that lead of the Swim All-Star team. Just like we spoke about the transitions in medley swimming, transitions in relay swimming are key. The changeover itself from one swimmer to the other, important obviously to be legal, but also to be fast and to maintain the lead or the momentum that's been gained. And uh, right out in front, some else that have done a great job of doing that. And while this race is developing, we just have one race to go. And thank you to everybody who's joined us here on BBC Sport Online, the Scottish National Open Swimming Championships here in the granite city of Aberdeen. We have three more days, three more evenings of finals, so please, if you have enjoyed the evening, if you have enjoyed the swimming, come and join us again. BBC Sport Online, Scottish National Swimming Championships 2019. Yeah, we'll be here same time tomorrow for the second day of action. We've still got a little bit more action for us to enjoy tonight. One more race after this one. The time from this race will be compared to the times in the, the final heat to discuss, to determine who the winner is going to be. And we'll, we'll just watch the changeovers here as they come into the halfway point. Ellie McCartney will lead the team from Swim Ulster. And it looks like Munster are just about getting the edge over Dumfries. With Beth Nolan against Amy Harkness there as they come into the halfway point. Ellie McCartney will hand over to Cora Rooney. A third 14-year-old going in for the Swim All-Star team. So Cora now with a safe changeover by the looks of things. Very safe. 14-year-olds probably not ready to take risks so like uh, senior swimmers would do a uh, very safe change over some all the girls there it feels a little bit like a pro 14 rugby contest Ulster versus Munster out yeah. in front here but uh, not to be confused with this uh, 4x200 women's freestyle relay here in Aberdeen between these uh, young ladies in come the Brock team to hand over at the halfway point great experience for all of these young swimmers to be here to be mixing with the likes of uh, Hannah Miley and uh, Ross Murdoch and Duncan Scott when they appear over the weekend Scott McClay we saw earlier on um, great to be warming up beside them to be doing their pre-swim routines beside them and to be watching and learning from them as they put some of that learning into practice here we have coming up to her half uh, way point good swim from this team I'm really impressed with them well, entry times for the Swim All-Star team were 9.07.49 for the team. I wonder if they can just step under that nine-minute mark. It'd be nice to see them get under that barrier. Monster clear in second position. I wonder if they've got anything left in the tank. They've got 16-year-old Faye Cullen on the final leg. Things getting very, very stretched out now. We have Ava Simpson going on the last leg for Dumfries. Lindsay Cameron in at the moment. So two 16-year-olds on the last leg there for team from Dumfries and from Munster and from the Brock as well with Elaine Murray going on the final leg and they'll be chasing down the 14-year-old from Swim Ulster, Jody McMullen. We saw Jody McMullen swim very well earlier today. And we'll watch the changeovers, the final changeovers here as they come down to the scoreboard end again. It is... Cora Rooney swam a very good third leg here. Increased the advantage for the Ulster team in line number five. And again, making sure of that changeover for the Ulster team. Munster in second. And it's going to be quite tough for them to pull back the advantage that they have now. But Munster going with Faye Cullen on that final leg. Taking over from Heather Fane. It's step changeover being employed by the Dumfries teams. We've seen, a, we've seen a range of changeovers here, some of the youngsters. and That's great to see. It ones. really is great to see them experimenting with that, trying to get the best changeover they can. Something we've been impressing upon all of our young swimmers to experiment, to try to learn and uh, to execute the best race skills that they can, no matter the distance or stroke. 
And you as a, as a coach, Alan, as the national coach, do you go to the major international? Do you look for teams doing something innovative with maybe the changeovers or techniques or Of terms? course, of course. And uh, this is the opportunity to do it, not just for these swimmers, but for our older and better swimmers this year before the build-up to the Olympic Games to execute whether it be a new skill or a race strategy in order to perfect that uh, ahead of those Olympic Games games but there's always something whether it was the invention of underwater uh, backstroke uh, butterfly kicking on backstroke or whether it's the changes to some of the rules there's always innovative coaches and swimmers trying to do their best to uh, maximize their performances a special mention here because we have two Irish teams of uh, the improvements that have been made in Irish swimming over the last few years led of course by performance director John Rudd at one time of Plymouth Leander and coach to Ruta Melatuti, Olympic champion, but also joined by a couple of renowned Scottish coaches. Ben Hickson, who was at Stirling University, set the programme up there to such success, now being led by his former assistant Steve Tigg and John Tranick, dad to Mark and Jack, who swam here um, this evening. Um, both coaches doing a terrific job for Ireland, and we wish John, Ben and... Uh, other John, all the very best for their successful improvements. Great win for Ulster. 8.57, Paul, you called it under nine minutes. Well, well inside their entry time. And I'm sure those 14-year-olds will be delighted with that. Big, big improvement. Yeah, good swim there from the Ulster team. 8.57, improvement there of 10 seconds to dip them under the nine-minute mark. 9-11 for the Munster team and 9-15 for the team from Dumfries and a final summer from the Brock Elaine Murray 16 year old is coming home now to bring this young team from the north east of Scotland home and the Brock are in now in 9.41.13 looks like the result is confirmed immediately no disqualifications for us here and swim at Ulster 8.57.07. That will be the target for the next heat. 8.57.07. And, uh, well, it's a team of 14-year-olds, as we said. Should be uh, not going to be enough for uh, to get into the middle positions. But they'll be pleased with that one. Be pleased with the performance that they had tonight in that relay squad. Uh, 4 by 200 I'm sure they'll be delighted. And... As we mentioned in that heat with so many youngsters, great to see so many youngsters in this final heat, final race of the evening across all of the teams, 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds. Uh, great to see those youngsters mixing it with uh, some of their older teammates, trying to get some uh, relay points, really podium places for themselves, for the teammates and for other programmes. Yeah, we've got a number of junior teams in this one, and for it to be a junior team, of all the four swimmers obviously have got to be in the, the junior age group. We've got City of Glasgow, they're a junior team in lane number one, Aberdeen Performance Juniors in lane number two, Warrender in six, and Carnegie in seven, all junior teams, so they'll be fighting it out for the junior title here, as well as the seniors in the centre lane, you would expect Aberdeen Performance City of Glasgow to be fighting this one out in the centre. We've got very, very strong lineups here. Swim Ulster have got a team in, they've got their senior team in as well in lane number three. And Munster as well, they've got their senior team in in lane number eight. Full lineup here at South Aberdeenshire in zero. City of Glasgow Juniors in one. Aberdeen Performance Juniors in two. Three senior teams in three, four, and five. Swim Ulster, Aberdeen Performance, and City of Glasgow. Two juniors in six and seven. Warren de Bass and Carnegie. Munster and Connaught are in eight and nine. So almost a full lineup of the the Irish provinces here. Great start from Emily Horn. Something she's noted for. A sprinter from City of Glasgow. Taken it out very strongly for them. Of course, the Aberdeen performance team will be anchored by Hannah Miley back in for her final swim of the day. And uh, she has great experience in this event for her club, for Scotland and for Great Britain. Women's 4x200 free, as we discussed earlier. 
very, very strong event internationally and uh, something which some of these young girls will be aspiring to do in the future. But Emily Horn very comfortably in the lead at the moment. Not particularly known for anything beyond the 100 metre mark, so uh, let's hope she's paced this correctly for herself and for her teammates. And that's a really strong first 100. Just over 60 seconds, 60.51, and that would compare really favourably with the individual women's two and freestyle final that we saw earlier on, won by Kat Greenslade, and uh, so uh, tightly contested with her teammates Rachel Masson and uh, Lucy Hope, and this is a really good swim from Emily Horn. She is older than most of these other girls and more experienced, but uh, she's really pushing ahead. Yeah, she certainly is. She's got the City of Glasgow team, some clear water at the front of the field. And that in itself could be important when they come to the changeovers, when they get to the later part of these races. She's certainly bringing them with a lead of around, well, almost five metres or so ahead of the second place. So that's probably the team from Ulster now, Victoria Catterson on that opening leg. And uh, Gaia Alcaraz from Aberdeen performance as well in the mix for second position, one lane down. But it is going to be Emily Horn with a clear lead here for City of Glasgow. She's given them a great platform here to build on in the early stages. She certainly has 205.65. She'll be well pleased with that. Uh, let's be generous and call it a very safe changeover by uh, Serena Higwaram, uh second summer for uh, Glasgow. She certainly wasn't taking any risks there. And uh, if anything, she's extending that lead a little bit uh, on the first 50 of uh, her leg. She'll come under a little bit of pressure, I, I would imagine. Kaylin Hall, Alice Alcaraz um, will be pressing her hard. But uh, 235.77, that's a 30-second first 50 for Serena. Certainly consolidating the lead established by Emily Horn for City of Glasgow. Yeah, Serena got him. Yes, probably better known as that. Butterfly swimmers, yeah, Guaram doing a good job here in the opening stages of this 200 freestyle leg in this relay. It's Aberdeen coming through into second position now. Alice Alcaraz just going ahead of El Donegan from Ulster. But still, Guaram with the lead. We'll just check the gap now. It's around about three seconds between her and Alice Alcaraz. We'll see if Alcaraz can pull that back for the local team from the Aberdeen performance team. We've got a very strong finish, Farrick Swanson and Hannah Miley on the last two legs. And certainly coming back now, Alice Alcaraz is challenging Serena Iguaram as she come up to that final turn for this leg of this relay. We'll be at halfway when they reach the bottom end. And the Aberdeen performance team would dearly love to have a lead taking them into the second half. They certainly would, and uh, I suspect the lead will change, if not on this 50, very, very soon into the third swimmer. Great uh, swim from Alice Alcaraz. Paced it well, brought in her leg kick on the second hundred. Really strong uh, off that wall. And uh, not only are Aberdeen performance beginning to come through, but uh, so are Warrender. Yeah, the Warrender junior team. Olivia Mason took over from Natalie Jones and they'll hand over to Anna Green who's been on good form here already today. The youngster, the 14-year-old Anna Green. And that's a junior team and they're leading the junior standards standings at the moment. The Warrender team with that familiar red cap. Swim Ulster battling for the third spot with Warrender. Outside the Swim Ulster team is the Aberdeen Performance Juniors as well. They're not out of the reckoning for the junior title, but it is their senior colleagues who is leading them through. And now they have a lead of around about a second and a half over the City of Glasgow team. Vary Swanson in that third leg for the Aberdeen performance team. Katie Taylor on the third leg for City of Glasgow. Katie Taylor, well, she's digging in well here. The lead not really extending too much in these early stages now. Uh, Katie Taylor doing a good job for City of Glasgow, but Barry Swanson still has the edge as they come into their 100 metre turn. That's a gutsy first 100 from Katie Taylor, trying to reclaim that lead for City of Glasgow against University of Aberdeen performance. Katie, probably better known as a butterfly swimmer, but she's also had some success in open water, so she'll have the stamina to keep this pace going over the next 
75 metres or so and uh, she's run level with possibly just edging ahead now of uh, Mary Swanson well great contest here Katie Taylor doing an excellent job now for City of Glasgow Mary Swanson trying to hold on to that lead they're absolutely neck and neck to the 100 both of them 552 68 an absolute dead heat there at the top end it is a great contest here Mary Swanson and Katie Taylor, maybe Katie Taylor with that blue cap now of City of Glasgow just has the edge. The final leg swimmers are ready to go. Katie McKenzie and Hannah Miley, those are the two that will fight it out for the gold and silver medal position now. City of Glasgow, great leg for Katie Taylor. She gives Katie McKenzie the advantage over Hannah Miley. An excellent contest between these two. Great contest for third as well. It looks like Sashka Wade for the City of Glasgow Juniors in third spot. Contest for the junior title going on here. But at the front of the field, Hannah Miley just pulling ahead of Katie McKenzie. Don't envy Katie McKenzie her task here, to be honest. The Glasgow team have done really well to stay in contention with Aberdeen performance. Much better than their entry seat um, would suggest. But I don't think there's any doubt about who's going to win here. The question will be by how much, how close can Katie McKenzie stick to Hannah Miley over this last 125 metres. It's been a terrific race, there's been some terrific races all evening, not just up front here but for those uh, junior places and for the uh, minor places throughout this race. Well Hannah Miley is looking supreme again as she comes in to the 100 metre mark. Katie McKenzie clear in third position, what a contest for the minor places what a contest for the junior title here in lane number six Jenny Galloway going well for Warren the Bass junior team and she's just ahead now of lane number two and that's Sienna Perry from Aberdeen performance and also lane number one as well and that's Leah Hughes for City of Glasgow the three junior teams battling for the bronze medal and the senior bronze medal and the junior gold medal but here comes Hannah Miley there's no doubt about where that senior gold medal is going to go to Hannah Miley is going to bring the Aberdeen performance team home for a home win here at the Aberdeen Aquatic Centre here it is fantastic swim from the Aberdeen team they're going to claim this relay gold medal ahead of the city of Glasgow and Hannah Miley on her way to another Scottish title, another gold medal for Hannah Miley, she slammed that last 200 very very well Katie McKenzie coming with the silver for City of Glasgow but what a battle here for the junior title now, it may well be Sienna Perry, could it be a junior title and a senior title for Aberdeen Performance I think it is, Sienna Perry in, in 848.75 just ahead of Jenny Galloway and the juniors battling it out there for third spot and for the junior title. Alan, great contest there. Great contest. A couple of uh, wins bookended this session for University of Aberdeen performance. The home team, we had Tony Shaw with that British record in that first final of the evening and topped off by that win for the seniors and the juniors of University of Aberdeen performance in that ladies 4x200 freestyle really great final legs by Hannah Miley and by Sienna Perry I'm sure head coach Patrick Miley and coaches Gregor McMillan and Lisa Houston will be delighted with their evening's work they've been in the pool since about 5.30 this morning so I think they've earned their dinner <laughs> absolutely <laughs> That's a long shift for these coaches and for the, the swimmers as well. You said Hannah Miley was in, in that early morning session. She's in the very last race, the very last leg of the relay this evening. And she'll still have more events to come, I'm sure, over the, the course of the Scottish Championships. Remember to join us for the next three days at the Scottish Championships. We'll be here broadcasting live from the Aberdeen northeast of Scotland hashtag SNOC19 if you want to join us on Twitter please send your messages to myself and Alan and also good luck messages to the swimmers on that hashtag SNOC19 medal presentations to come of course Alan please stay with us for those final presentations 
Relay teams just making their way to the marshalling area. And we've also got the men's 1500 metres freestyle, which proved to be an absolute cracker. It was a ding dong battle all the way through between Marshall Illingworth and Liam McLaughlin. Won by the Warrender man, as we saw. They'll have uh, done some of the recovery from that. They'll have done a little bit of swim down during those uh, women's relay races, but uh, I'm sure they and the uh, other swimmers towards the back end of the, seas uh, the session will have a little bit more recovery swimming to do. Of course, they'll be replenishing the nutrients and the fuel that they've used throughout the day, throughout the evening, with uh, food and with drinks, with protein shakes, with recovery shakes, and then off for dinner early to bed. It's not too late an evening session here as we uh, reach just after 7 p.m. local time, so plenty of time for the swimmers to boost the local economy and to, to get some rest, <laughs> although there's a lot of daylight at the moment in Aberdeen, so it doesn't get there dark is. very easily. Yeah, it was daylight right up till about 11 o'clock last night here in Aberdeen at the north of Scotland. Great setting here for the Scottish National Open Championship. Angus Allison picking the bronze medal. Marshall Illingworth. Well, what a great swim he had. The City of Glasgow man just pit by that blistering last 100 for Liam McLaughlin, Warren de Bass. Well, we thought he'd lost contention as they've gone through. I break the uh, the middle of those uh, of those hundreds within the 1500, but it didn't prove that way. Liam McLaughlin claimed powering through in the end to take that senior title and Angus Allison the bronze medal will be accompanied by the Scottish Junior Gold Medal for the young man from Warren de Bass so Angus Allison Scottish Junior Champion Liam McLaughlin the Scottish Senior Champion so two gold medals going to the Warren de Bass Club with Marshall Ellingworth a silver medal for City of Glasgow Medals being presented by Andy Figgins, head coach of East Coast Swim Team. Celebrated, as I mentioned before, their 50th anniversary this year. Andy is a very experienced, renowned coach within the Scottish swimming circles. Head coach of the Commonwealth Youth Games in Samoa a few years ago. And now a member of the Scottish Swimming Board. So, delighted to see Andy here. Delighted to see him supporting his swimmers and presenting these medals. The final presentation for the women's 4x200 metres freestyle really. Yeah, and a nice one for the home crowd to finish off with. So the Aberdeen Performance Juniors. The bronze medal for the senior event. Alicia Bain, Kaelin Hall, Mari McDonald and Sienna Perry taking that senior bronze medal. There's a real tussle as well with the other junior teams, City of Glasgow and Warren Der Bass. You can tell right up to the last leg for where that junior title was going to go and where that bronze medal was going to go. Yeah, great race to finish and uh, really just topped off what was a great evening of racing all the way through, whether it was the finish of the relay, the finish of the 1500 or the finish of some <laughs> of those 50s that were literally hundreds apart. What's your pick of the evening, Paul? What do you reckon to your uh, favourite swim, best performance of the night? I think I've got a well, pretty good idea. Well, we had some great performances uh, all the way through, actually. I mean, the 100 freestyle was star-studded. It's always good to see the records going at the very first race of the night. Tony Shaw, excellent there. Watch out for her in the Para Swimming World Championships. I've known Tony since she was very young, and she's still very young, of course. She's only been on the scene for about four or five years now, but she's really powered through. So it's great to see Tony Shaw getting the home team off to a good start. And also, I'd love to watch Hannah Miley as well. 400 metres individual medley, still one of the world's very best. Hannah Miley, great to see her back in the pool. So probably the highlight, I think. Hannah making her comeback here, winning another couple of Scottish titles. We've just seen her presented with another one there. The final leg for the Aberdeen performance team. Guy Alcaraz, Alice Alcaraz, Mary Swanson and Hannah Miley. And there's the juniors as well, joining their senior colleagues to get their gold medal for the junior title again. 
as we said, the Aberdeen performance team, Alicia Bain, Kaelin Hall, Mary McDonald and Sienna Perry. Silver medal going to the Glasgow team, Emily Horn, Serena Iguaram, Katie Taylor and Katie McKenzie. Highlights for yourself, Alan? Well, I'm also going to stick with the ladies. I'm going to go with KD, Kathleen Dawson. Uh, delighted to see her back to her very best with that uh, 50 backstroke win, 28-1-2. Puts her into the uh, top 20 or so in uh, women's 50 backstroke swimming. And following her knee surgery in November, it's a remarkable turnaround. A testimony to the surgeon, to her rehab team, to herself and the coaching and support staff at University of Stirling to get her back to her best and she's not finished she'll swim in those US National Championships at Stanford University in uh, four or five weeks time and looking for her to be even better and uh, perhaps challenging her Scottish record at that event so terrific stuff KD uh, the highlight for me but many many more highlights I'm sure over the next three days yeah absolutely still three more days of these championships to come we've seen some quality swimming and there's some more quality swimming to come we'll see Scotland's champion Duncan Scott Commonwealth champion and European champion due to take the start tomorrow Ross Murdoch will also be competing at these championships it's been a great first evening we've seen some good youngsters and we've seen some of the old hands coming back and performing well thank you very much for joining myself and Alan Lynn for this first evening here in Aberdeen for the Scottish National Open Championships 2019 please remember to join us again tomorrow we will be on air just before 5 o'clock in the evening UK time so have a very good day tomorrow and join us at 5 o'clock for day two of the Scottish National Open Champion. Bye for now. <laughs>